What is up, everybody? Welcome to the grand finals of the 2021 TNT Champions. I am your host, Stealthius, and joining me at the desk today, we've got Kipo and Tander Draco. What's going on, guys? Hey, what's up, man? Oh, so hyped for this finals, dude. Been waiting a long time for this. Oh, man. Ever since the possibility of a Mishi Tatanka finals started kind of looming around, I've been, uh, I've been so excited for this. How you doing, Tandor? Is this our first time casting together? No, no, we've casted a... It was a little while ago, but it's probably second or third time. Okay. And dude, I am super hyped. We've all... all of, Everybody in the community knows how hyped Tank is and how much he's been crushing with the meta play. Right. But he has yet to win a big championship. He got uh, first place in the intermediate right. last season, but this is his chance to take one. So, hi hype for that. Yeah. yeah the, go ahead. I think I'm... The thing I'm so hyped about is just the storyline too. Like the, we came in with the metagame, this Wolf Owl metagame. Everyone's saying, "Oh, it's so OP, so OP." Right. Mishi had to go through so many Wolf Owl players to get here, and if he wins the tournament, he will have the title hero in the Tooth and Tail Discord. Could he be the champion of light we've been waiting for? Yeah, that that is one thing I didn't realize until I think this morning when Tatanka pointed it out. But I, I'm so excited just for this storyline here. I mean, Mishi versus Tatanka. You know, a little bit of background for anybody who's not super familiar with with Tooth and Tail. Mishi is, I kind of call him the old school great. I mean, he's been fighting through several different metas since late 2017, early 2018. I mean, he's faced off against the uh, the old players like from the Alpha and, and launch era, like Zeno. DJ so chip from space up into the mid range of the game's history with guys like the gentleman, this guy, Erlu, and he's here today in modern tooth and tail. And again, I think the big story of what is going to unfold today is the Wolf Owl Snake meta against Mishi, who's kind of a creative player. But I, I wanted your guys' thoughts on this because the way I've been kind of thinking about it coming into this match today is that you know Mishi's got such a large tool belts you know coming uh under since he's survived in so many different metas i mean he has a really good intimate understanding of how to utilize several different units you know he's gonna have things like chameleons and mines and i know they're not super meta right now but stuff like toads and falcons even in, in niche situations i mean mishi's gonna have a lot of uh different available assets to try to figure out how to break down this wolf owl comp yeah i mean um <laughs> I think from Tatanka, we'll kind of just see one build the whole time. Squizzard, Wolf Owl, Snake Skunk. But for Mishi, like you said, man, he has such a deep understanding of this game. It's crazy. He always seems to be ahead of you in eco. Uh, he has an early game strategy, a mid and a late game strategy. I think we're going to see some Badger play. I think we're going to see some Ferret play. I see, think we're going to see some Toad play. All the units that the community has come around and said, you know, these are the weakest units right now. He is just coming in and crushing with. That's one of the reasons I have so much respect for him. Yeah, I'm gonna say too that uh, that gives Mishi a little bit of an edge um, and he needs every little bit he can get against the meta play of Tatanka. But the fact that Mishi is kind of gonna know what Tatanka is up to at any given point, whereas Tatanka has no idea which of Mishi's ver many, many, many styles is gonna be coming. So Tatanka has to play a little bit blind here and uh, trust in his meta deck, whereas Mishi gets to call the shots in that way. Tander, you're always uh, a big guy for the StarCraft references, so another way I was thinking about this is that Tonka has kind of reminded me of like innovation, like just such a solid, mechanically, fundamental in the meta kind of player, where Mishi is almost like Brood War Shine, you know, just like bag of builds over here. You never know what he's gonna bring out. Yeah, I like that, I like that. I'm familiar enough with Shine anyway that, that I like that comparison. All right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Kipo, do you want to touch base a little bit on this event? Uh, you know, how we kind of got here, uh, what we're looking at. Best of 13, it's going to be a slugfest today. Yeah, sure. So, speaking to some members of the community, I was talking to Tandor about this earlier. I mean, Tatanka is going into this, I think, the favorite. So, looking at his tournament run, Epicosity, Fleur, Night Slayer, Tiki. He hasn't dropped a single map. He didn't drop a single map to any of these players. He's completely undefeated. Mishi has had a real, like, rocky road, but it was pretty epic. He took out Swifty, and then he lost against Trumpet, and then battled his way through loser's bracket, beating Epicosity, myself, 
Night Slayer, and then R22. And most of those went to a final game seven. So uh, definitely kind of a, a rocky road, but yeah, it's definitely an awesome story. All right, so I guess without any further ado, we should get this going here shortly. Uh, uh, I, I want to I want to interrupt real quick and say yeah. one more thing for the chat. Um, the format here is best of 13, and Tatanka being from the winner's bracket gets a winner's bracket advantage. So he hasn't dropped uh, lost a match to anyone, so he starts off 2-0, to 0, and then we go forward with the best of 13. So at the most, we'll see 11 games here. Um, you can also think of it as first one to seven wins. Yeah, uh, best of 13 is insane. I don't think we've gone this crazy before. I think the, the highest I've seen is best of nine. But tooth and tail matches generally are pretty short, even if we get into a late game. Um, so what are you guys thinking? What's what's your predictions coming in? Let me throw out there, I got a couple of predictions from folks in the, uh, in the Discord earlier. Aralu popped in and kind of gave his views, and I got out of him a 7-2 to prediction uh, to Tatanka. So Tatanka winning 7-2. to two as a prediction from Aralu. Um, I got Sasha on board with that, 7-2, 7-3. So those wow. are a couple of highlights from Community. And another, yeah. um, oh, go ahead, Kipo. Yeah, let's do your predictions first. Well, Tandor and I talked about it earlier. We actually both had the same prediction, believe it or not. 3-7 uh, Tatanka wins. Three, yeah, seven that's kind of what I'm thinking. I, I got to give Tatanka that edge, but uh, I don't know. I'm not super solid on it. Like, if anybody can take to tank it down, obviously Mishi is uh, potentially the one to do it. So I'm excited. Now, a another thing that's pretty fun about this uh, this event this weekend, don't forget, guys, the intermediate finals uh, tomorrow are also going to be super hype. Uh, but this is kind of the, the last crowning grace of this patch. You know, Eel is hard at work uh, creating a new balance patch here. So this this is kind of it. This is the grand finale of both this Wolf Owl Snake meta patch i mean maybe it'll continue into the future um and and it's also the the grand finals of i guess you know the last big tooth and tail tournament of the year so uh really cool in a bunch of regards but all right what do you guys think should we uh should we get into this i, I think people have waited long enough here yeah let's do it let's do it okay, okay yeah, i'm ready i'm ready let's go and we also and uh uh, one more thought. We also did tell uh, the players that since it is such a long series, both of them have one uh, break they can request. So whenever they want a break, uh, we will let them have one. Uh, and then go ahead, uh, go ahead, Kipo. Yeah, while these guys are picking their units, um, I just want to throw out there, you know, more into the storyline, right? So this is the last tournament of 2021. Last tournament was between Mishi and Erlu. And at the time, Erlu was basically considered the best player, number one camel, ladder, etc., etc. So Erlu ended up winning that tournament, but Mishi came out of nowhere and was was really strong, made it to the finals. Actually, this was two tournaments ago, my bad. Um, and now we have Mishi doing the same thing here. Like everyone kind of regards Tatanka as the best player right now. Camel, ladder, etc., etc., PBCs. And Mishi, just like he did against Erlu when Erlu was dominant, is now doing against Tatanka. Last time Erlu won, let's see if Tatanka can keep the trend going. All right, in the bottom left, in the green, we've got Tatanka. And up on the top right, we have Mishi. And another big point, too, is that uh, this would, if Mishi does pull this off and win this event, he will. I think he's going to be the only player that has two TNT Championship uh, win, wins under his uh, belt here. He did win uh, 2020 Season 1 against uh, old King James. So really excited. And look at this, you know, what we expect out of Tatanka. And meanwhile, Mishi, yeah, you know, he's got the Toads, he's got Badger Wolf, he's got some Pigeons, so he, he's looking to do something uh, a little crazy here. Already an edge out for, for Tatanka. I mean, for Mishi, because Tatanka finally scouts Mishi's base, which means he had to put down that safety warrant. Mishi even fake rallied too to throw in an extra mind game. So it's going to be an eco advantage for Mishi. Yeah, so I think um, it, I'm interested to see all of the different plays that Mishi has uh, as ideas to counter Tatanka. And the first one he's got here, we've got Squizzode into Wolf Badger. And we've seen a couple of cases of Wolf Badger face down the uh, Wolf Owl and actually do all right. Um, and then he's also set up for a lot of early pressure. How do you feel like the map is? It seems like neither one really has a good expansion. So we might see some early one base play. 
Yeah, I think yeah, that I kind of favors Mishi. You know, Tatanka, generally, I think with this Wolf Alice style, you want to get up that two base, but uh, Tatanka diving in with the Lizard is going to be pushed back for now. Yeah, one for one, so no nothing too crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if these tier threes are going to come to fruition from either player. Right. So I, I think it's a cool way to start the first game. Yeah, with such short rush distances here, it's going to be really difficult for either player to be too greedy on either economy or tech. So we might just have a good old-fashioned tier 1 slugfest here where Mishi has a few more options available. Yeah, he's got toads, and he has pigeons, although I don't think we'll see those. Uh, and Tatanka is no squizzard slouch either, so if Tatanka can get up, like, one set of tier 2, like one set of skunks, and, and uh, Mishi plays into that, I think that gives Tatanka an edge, actually, so... I think the story is going to be whether Tatanka can get up that tier 2. Now, Kipo, if, if Tatanka throws down to the tier 2, is that pretty much just kind of signaling to Mishi, like, now is the time to strike? It, so it could be, but I don't think on this map, just because of this choke point, that he's really going to get anything done. He doesn't really have the toad count either, and... You know, the triple tier one is nice. It's good. It's nice to have. But the thing is, it's extremely hard to utilize because you really have to use, you know, all three tier ones want to be in different positions on the board at any given time. So even though Tatanka is down a tier one in um, his ar army selection, uh, even now we don't see Mishi going into the squirrels. So he's only using two. So Mishi's trying to expand here and play a little bit more defensively. And we know Toads aren't really in the meta, but let's see if they can get some decent connections. That's not too bad, actually. Um, but Tatanka has enough squirrels, he's going to push Mishi back. And yeah, it looks that like little a pretty bit even of, trade uh, for right now. A little bit of choke was really nice for Tatanka's rallying squirrels there. You know, it's hard to get up on top of them with all the crates and rocks and whatnot right there. And that mill from Mishi is a little questionable. I wonder if that was kind of a tank mill or if he really does think he can get to the point where he can throw down some farms here. Well, I think he yeah, desperately wants to, whether or not he thinks he can. So here comes another engagement. Squirrels getting volley after volley off, but pretty good toe connections, I'd say. Yeah, it's just the lizards are so good right now, and Tatanka is kind of shy to go up on lizards because he's up against toads. So, so far, that mill is uh, half health. It got some damage taken, but Mishi still has it. And with that last trade, Mishi's dropping all his toads all together here, and he looks like he's going to try to throw down a farm. Maybe. He's thinking about it. And it's about to get spicy, because that five-minute mark is going to be here before you know it. So it's going to become kind of do or die for both these uh, players here. And yeah, Tatanka doesn't have any kind of map presence to, to grab another mill at the moment yet. Let's see what Mishi's thinking. I mean, every bit of food right now is so important. Throwing down that farm is really risky. Tatanka Tanka does have... Pretty... Yeah, he's got a tier one lead right now. Yeah, he's got uh... a better army. So Mishi's going to have to force a fight right here. And I don't know if it's going to be really too good for him let's see i think tatanka with the squirrels in the back line just pelting away at everything and he's gonna get the mill too yeah that positioning yeah, on the high ground is so good yeah it's wizard is so good defensively you don't want to attack into it with pure lizard and we just saw why so mishi's actually in pretty big trouble now to tank with an army lead and killing that expansion Looks like Tatanka is on his way to winning game number one here. Let's see if he can pull it off or if Mishi's rallying forces will be able to, to get it done. And it is hard for Mishi to attack out of his base up onto this high ground out here when Tatanka's already got his units kind of in position. Um, but cleaning up for now. Man, Tatanka's coming out on top in the tier one versus tier one warfare. And you know, this is going to be a lot of the games that we see. A lot of the games on ladder and at this level just end in the tier one phase. And you kind of called it in the beginning, Delphi. As you said, that's a questionable for, mill for Mishi. At the end of the day, it was just 60 food sunk cost. Right. I think uh, another decision for Mishi there was going into pure lizard. I don't know, because Squizzard can hold against pure lizard in equal numbers. I think everyone agrees there, so I think that was an, another questionable call for Mishi. Yeah, I mean, lizards can't make miracles happen, but this has just been such a straightforward map. There hasn't really been any flanks or ways to get around to your opponent's base, and that's it. Tatanka's gonna take game number one. Yeah, Mishi taps out there. Another little thing I wanted to, to note there was the, uh, the farm that Tatanka ended up taking out was uh, not, I mean, it was a starting farm, so it, you know, he didn't go down to three at the five minute mark, so stayed even economy, but Nicely played there from Tatanka, a nice little slugfest tier one style to get us going. So, I mean, that that was a pretty wonky map, though, you know. Uh, let's see how things happen 
in, in the next game. Maybe we'll get a bit more of a mid-range map where players have naturals and, and decent rush distances, but there's only one way to find out, and will Mishi select the same deck? I mean, as, as you were saying earlier, Kipo, I mean, Tatanka is kind of the one-trick pony in this in this uh, tournament today. You know, it should be pretty expected he's going to run the same thing over and over. Mishi changing it up a little bit, deciding on some mines. Here we go. Game number two. Over in the bottom, we've got Tatanka, and up top, Mishi. What are you guys thinking about this uh, map gen here? I think it's um, it, it, it's pretty, it's pretty standard or even for both players. I don't think anyone has an overwhelming advantage. What I think is interesting is Mishi dropped the Toad. So we saw Mishi running a triple tier three one, tier one, and you'd think in theory that he'd have an advantage, but Squizzard was really just the way to go, and Tatanka ended up winning out. So he's dropping the Toads. I think that's a good call, and he's putting in the Mine, right? And Mine is what is going to put you over the top in that early game tier one skirmish, right? So really, we're seeing some, uh, you know, adjustments from Mishi in response to Ta Tatanka in that last game, and I like it. Yeah, I think um, the mines are going to give Mishi a little bit more flexibility than Toads have. Um, there, you can get more things than just extra damage out of them. You can get some scouting information. Uh, you can get some surprise damage. We'll see if Tatanka um, is ready for the mines when they come out. Uh, now, I do want to say, Delthys, you're kind of saying that Tatanka is going to be running the same thing every time. And I want to throw out that there are a couple of subtle variations That's in true. Tatanka's deck. You can swap out either the Squirrel or the Lizard for for uh, turrets. Right. And I'm really interested to see if Tatanka does that at all this series or if he sticks with this Wizard variation. Yeah, I like the mind pick. Uh, again, one thing that I think is kind of cool for Mishi, since he has kind of played in so many different metas, he really understands how to utilize a lot of different units. And, you know, something too I would like to see out of Mishi is maybe some chameleons, because chameleons are kind of in an interesting spot this patch where I think they're generally considered like a, a top tier unit, but they just don't really fit into that Wolf Owl package, if that makes sense. But I, I think if Mishi had some good cam play, maybe later on, uh, that could really help give him an edge in the early game. Yeah, the only thing that's tough about the Chameleons is that Tatanka wants to sit back and defend, and with Snakes, attacking into a defensive position with Chameleons is like a death sentence. Right. They're amazing for those skirmishes out in the middle of the map, which is what we saw last game. Um, but yeah, I, I see Tatanka mixing it, or excuse me, I see Mishi mixing in ferrets at some point in this game, in this match, and look at that, he's gonna grab the fire pit for, uh, prior to getting his first farm, it's, it's a nice little pickup. Yeah, so it looks like both sides are gonna go ahead and get into their second bases here, try to safely go up without losing tier one. Um, and in this kind of situation, I like Mishi's playstyle, he's known as being very... Uh, macro greedy so if he can get an edge here that's going to give him the position he wants to get uh out his double tier three yeah and it's kind of an interesting spot for mishi now that you bring up he's an eco player because if if you're in mishi's shoes i mean do you want the game to go to an eco you know what i mean because the opponent's going to get that i mean in, in a lot of regards uh, the better late game comp right so if you kind of want to shake hands and do the gentleman's agreement and power up I mean, is Mishi going to be able to compete in the late game? I think that's what he's hoping for with his tier 3 comp. Um, Wolf Badger definitely can fight against Wolf Owl, at least with just, you know, one or two owls out. Eventually, the Wolf Owl gets to be too much, but at the first, I, I've seen it work, so we'll have to see if he wants to go for that. Yeah, and just like every single game I play against in Mishi, with Mishi or C being played, he is up at Eco. Tanka is going to try and take advantage of this by going in. He sees Mishi is being too greedy, and he's going to be able to take this fight. And with it, he's going to be able to cancel some farms and maybe get some damage done. Yeah, that's not even just taking the fight a little bit. That's He's going to be able to kill two, three pigs. Uh, kill three pigs, and he got damage on one of the forced cells. So that's a huge lead for Tatanka there. Uh, calling Mishi out on his greed, and now Tatanka is three farms ahead. Yeah, great uh, great decision making there from Tatanka. Really good game sense, kind of keeping up on the scouting, knowing when to hold him and fold him. Mishi trying to come in for some counter damage here, but it looks like Tatanka's going to have enough rallying out of the Warrens to push him back. And yeah, now uh, it, it's in a great spot for Tatanka. I mean, Mishi isn't dead in the water just yet, but he's got a little bit of a bloody nose so far. Yeah, and Tatanka's going to go ahead and, and start putting more pressure on here force Mishi to keep uh, keep selling his farms down. 
Yeah, I think it's a good move, especially when you have more economy. Here's the engage. It looks like Tatanka's positioning is really good. Reinforcements coming in for Mishi from behind. Saka doesn't even care about the army. He's going for every single pick that he can. Just getting further and further ahead in economy. And it looks like Tatanka is going to just snowball from here. And I think he's also daring Mishi to counterattack. Um, he did so much damage to farms, the only, like, standard re uh, response is to counterattack. And Tatanka's like, okay, do it. Come here. Come at me. Uh, Mishi's not gonna bite though. He's gonna try to come back here. Yeah, Mishi might have won that battle, but Tatanka won the war. I mean, killing off all those pigs, he's got such a big economic lead at the moment. You, you kind of got to disregard the farm count because you got to keep in mind that Mishi's had to rebuild these farms over and over again, invest more and more food, and Tatanka's gonna come in for round three to try to seal the deal here. Mishi, uh, Mishi just doesn't have enough reinforcements here. The tier one count is in Tatanka's favor. The mines don't get enough value, and Mishi taps out. And is this going to be a shutout from Tatanka? I mean, <laughs> the pattern would continue. It's interesting. Like, like, Mishi had the mines, but he didn't really use them to their fullest, and that's what would have been able to help him hold there. But, yeah, I mean, everyone knows Mishi is... He's, like, the greediest player in Tooth & Tail, probably. And Tatanka knows it, too, and he's able to punish. Really well done. Tatanka's kind of showing that... He just has a little better fundamentals than Mishi in this series so far. Yeah, and that's what's so much. That's what's so great about this deck that Tatanka's uh, bringing out because it's really powerful in all phases of the game. You know, it's not like this. Okay, turtle up, eco into Wolf Owl. I mean, it can it can definitely get on the map and play in the early mid game. But in the bottom, down four to zero technically in the series, Mishi needs to get a point on the board. And up top, the unstoppable Tatanka, looking for a uh, clean sweep here. Big map though, lots of forests, long rush distance, maybe we'll get more into a macro game this time around. Yeah, I think definitely that last game, the expansions were really close together, and I saw there was a good chunk of road as well, so Tatanka was able to get his superior tier 1 army right onto Mishi's expansion immediately. But this map, uh, there's a lot more distance, there's a campfire in the way, um, and we could see 2 base or 3 base versus uh, 2 or 3 bases. Now, yep. Mishi also swapping out that uh, flex unit in his deck for turrets this time so definitely looking for edges in the early game but he's going to try turrets this time yeah nothing and, and wrong with turrets i mean uh especially since um you know Tsanka doesn't run ferrets or anything like that but yeah i think we're i think we're destined for a macro game here um, which is going to be a nice change of pace. This this map is really just screaming macro game, considering we both we saw two games in a row now that ended in the tier one phase. We haven't seen a tier two yet, guys. Yeah, I'm really excited for this map for a couple reasons. One, yeah, we're going to have a macro game. Two, it's pretty dang balanced, and I really like this uh, three o'clock expansion over in the side. It's like, okay, both players are going to get three bases. And then if we get into a really long grindy game, it's going to become this positional battle of who can kind of control this fourth base here. And I think uh, Mishi would have an edge. He's got the opening facing his base with that road, leading right to that 3 o'clock. And he also has the turrets, so that that 3 o'clock base would be very defendable for Mishi. Now watch out to, or excuse me, it's facing to tank's base, but Mishi has the turrets. Uh, watch out for this lizard run by. The map is technically a little bit of a, a donut shape, if you will. There's kind of this... A uh, skinny corridor on the uh, right side, and then the main entrance on the left side. So watch out for these lizard plays. Yeah, looking closer at that three o'clock, it, it's actually uh, you, if you see the uh, the hillside or I guess the terrain, it's really facing Tataka. So maybe Mishi can make something happen there. Uh, but maybe yeah, it miss, won't even. Come I miss up both at all. there. It's facing Tataka, but uh, Mishi does have the turrets, and the entrance to that base is one tile. So right. I could see either side taking that, and it's very defensible. That turret placement by Mishi was impeccable. Like, I don't know how many players would have put a turret there at that moment in the game so early on to defend against a possible lizard attack, but he somehow knew, and he somehow does. And he gets so far ahead in eco in this game. Tatanka's going to try and punish. Let's see if he has enough to do the job. It looks like he just has a little bit more army, but he's going into a choke here, and there are MGs. The lizards go in. MG is just finishing up in time, so he, he does force the cells, uh, but Tatanka has to retreat with the turrets going up. So Mishi playing really well into his uh, greedy style. Both sides are floating a lot of food, so I think we're going to see some tech here. There's the wolf for Tatanka, and a wolf for Mishi. Love it. All right, here we go, boys. Tier 3 on the way. Wolf coming out for both sides first. Now, 
Uh, typically, you do want to get that wolf first because then you can kind of utilize the economic uh, bonus, the the Warren buffing bonus, you know, while you're waiting, kind of round out the rest of your army. Yeah, the biggest deal there is the Warren buffing, so the wolf can buff the owl Warren or the badger Warren and get the. It's the fastest way of getting both tier threes out. Um, so Tatanka figured that out a while ago, and Mishi's going to do the same thing here with his tier three. Now the question is, uh, how quickly we're going to see that second tier three Warren go down? It should be pretty quick here from both of them. So I got a question for you, Kipo. You know, since Mishi really skimped out on the tier two here, do you think the move in the late game for Mishi is going to try to stack a bunch of different, a uh, bunch of multiple badgers? Yes, I think he will try to go up multi badger. Um, I played him in game earlier today. He went two. The thing that I'm looking for is if these opponent, the opponents can scout each other, because right now they still don't know about the their uh, opponent's tier three, and that's Tanaka needs to scout it right? because he needs to make the. Um, the snakes. It's not as critical for Mishi. I think Mishi probably assumes, but Sokka still doesn't know what's going on. Yeah. The other thing I, I want to point out is the tier, the tier two for the tank. He's going to have four skunks and four snakes, whereas Mishi's going to have to deal with just tier one. Um, and that might be the difference between the badger working out and the badger not working out. Good scout here from Mishi. Finally gets to dive in and see exactly what's going on. You kind of expect it at this phase of the game when it's such a kind of laid back macro style match but it's going to be hard for Tatanka to really get in there and I kind of agree with you Kipo I mean Mishi it's like okay he's a, it's a given he's going to be transitioning this comp now but Tatanka doesn't know exactly uh, what Mishi's going to try here is it going to be mass falcons is it going to be some badgers or a boar like who knows and he's double downing on the owls and the thing is Mishi has badgers he still hasn't seen Tatanka's so far down in economy it's crazy he's really going to try and go all in with these owls but the thing is he doesn't know about the badger with these MGs, I honestly think that Mishi is going to be fine, and he's so far ahead in economy. Looks like Tatanka's gearing up for an attack into a badger he hasn't even seen yet. Yep, so Mishi's going to push out here. He's got a lot of pigeons coming up, and there's only one owl out for Tatanka, so two tier twos, two tier threes, excuse me. Now the badger gets so many tags on it, but can the pigeons save it? The pigeons do not oh, save no, it. They don't. There was equal That's amounts huge. of uh, poison stacks and pigeons healing for a second there, but really good micro from Tatanka, uh, making sure to prioritize getting those uh, pigeons or the snake stacks as fast as possible. Let's see if Mishi can hold off. Mostly pigeons, though, just left over. These turrets are doing a great job buffering for now. Yeah, this fight's actually going pretty uh, pretty Mishi favorite, I think, with all of those pigeons able to keep units alive in this uh, skunk and snake gas. Badger still isn't being repaid, though, and, and Mishi really needs to get that, get that Badger out. Meanwhile, Tatanka has a second owl on the way, and it looks like this push is just going to continue. And now there's even more snakes at this party. I think it's going to be it, guys. There goes the wolf. Yeah, the snake's just dealing so much damage so fast when you get multiple sacks of poison like that. Tataka wanted to just target down that mill now. Uh, and yeah, I think this is probably it. Mishi not being able to uh, get the badger off the supply block for a little bit of time. And, and every second matters in, in games like this. So that badger getting delayed. Uh, really hurt. Yeah, guys, Tatanka's snake micro is freaking amazing in this kind of situation. And as Delphi said at the beginning of the cast, it's not just Wolf Owl, it's Wolf Owl Snake. And uh, with Tatanka's snakes there, he's gonna, he takes down the badger, and it looks like he's going in for another push. It's unfortunate. This is pretty much a picturesque game from Mishi here. I think Mishi has to drop the badger, guys, because, I mean, there weren't really any obvious mistakes. His badger was there. It was never scouted. He was crazy ahead of Nico. But the wolf owl with that snake micro, like you mentioned, was just too powerful. So I have just have a feeling we're going to see a switch out of badger from Mishi and into ferrets. Try to put some pressure on and end the game before wolf owl comes out. I think the big problem, too, is that Mishi's having a hard time with this deck to uh, really transition out of the tier one because you really don't want tier one in that situation. But hold that thought. Uh, let's get into it. Game number, well, I guess series number six here. In the bottom left, we've got Mishi with the classic ferrets that we've been looking forward to in the top right. Tatanka just stomping through so far. And, and what are you guys' thoughts on the, the ferret switch here? Yeah, well, this I, is a deck, Mishi, uh, Mishi's been playing this deck a bunch lately, uh, and Kipo, you've played against it as well, so how does it go? I think, so it's pretty insane. I think Mishi's perspective was, all right, I need to figure out if I could beat him with Badger, right? Try Badger like three games in a row, finally got it out, it didn't work. So now we're going into, this is the deck that we've all seen him play more often, right? And what we're going to see is he'll go up to, um, 
you know, he'll get that wolf out after like two or three bases. And from there, he'll just go mass snake. So many snakes. And what he'll try and do is get the snake buffed by the wolf so that he can um, snipe, like ninja snipe, uh, to tonk his tier three units. And he's really good at doing that. I don't see many other players attempt that kind of strategy, but his like ninja attacks with those wolf buff snakes, man, they get so much value. Mishi getting down and dirty here with a five farm double. Tatanka didn't quite scout it very early. Mishi, I think at least gets one pig here. Let's see how good his control is. Ooh, the pig's kind of in the back. I think uh, Tatanka's gonna hold that. You, you gotta oh, walk the pig out. RNG, RNG, come on. Yeah, He's gonna go in for another another hit here, but his commander does go down and the pig goes down. Four, four lizards to kill a pig is kind of even. Yeah, if you kind of keep in mind the delay in economy you're getting from having to rebuild that pig, but I, I wonder if Tatanka, it doesn't look like Tatanka will be able to counterattack. Sometimes that's the issue when you really kind of go all in. Uh, you leave yourself open, but Mishi have plenty of units to defend here, so a bit of an awkward early game for Mishi, and it looks like Tatanka will get back up to eight farms a little bit faster. Yeah, I think Tatanka came out ahead on that engagement, which is unfortunate. Uh, Mishi really needs a little bit of an edge here if he's going to be able to to farm up safely. Yeah, I didn't think we would see a rush. I thought these players just respected each other too much to even attempt it. And the, the RNG is unfortunate, right? Because if that pig was sticking out, two lizards would have done the job. Yeah. Instead, he had to lose all four. Yeah, thanks yeah, for and, pointing and, that and out because is... it's it's odd because you, you almost always see two lizards kill a corner pig like that. Yeah, and the other thing is you can't trust in the RNG, right? You have to actually go check and commander lock if you really need to get some damage done. So Mishi trying to roll the dice there. And Tatank is going to go for a counter push here right as Mishi's teching into more uh, tier 1 warrens. There's a greedy transition from Mishi. I don't know if uh, Tatanka can capitalize. Looks like he is going to get one um, warren and try and do some damage after that. But his commander's dead. I think he has to retreat. Oh, one pig goes down, though. Damn. His army was forward enough. That's actually... Uh, to, to, that's great for Tatanka, actually. Yeah, Warren and a pig there. I can't complain. And a little unfortunate for Mishi because he did anticipate the counterattack by building a couple turrets, but kind of delayed push came out of Tatanka. So right when Mishi sold off those MGs, the units for Tatanka showed up. So again, I mean, another edge for Tatanka here who's already taken a, a second base as well. How, how often after your commander dies and you rev and you revived, you instantly click the R button to retreat? Tatanka didn't do it. He revved and he revived and then he let his army continue fighting. Such good gameplay. Tataka preparing for round two here. Mishi trying to build some desperation turrets. Are they going to get up in time? Looks like the first one is down, but will it be enough damage? The second one coming in, I think Mishi will be fine now. Maybe a bit of a overstep here for Tataka. Do you guys think that might help get Mishi back into this a little bit? I think no, and here's why. Tatanka has a farm on his expansion, and so if he has a relatively even army trade like that, it it's such a lead in tempo because Mishi can't counterattack. So I think that's good for Tatanka still. Right. It's kind of the uh, when when you when you're ahead on economy, you don't mind as much from from taking a little bit of a worse trade. So Tatanka yeah, flexing yeah. here, denying the expansion from Mishi. Yeah, really beautiful army positioning out of Tatanka, and he knows that he's ahead. He's ahead in every aspect of this game. So he's just gonna leave his army here. He actually is gonna take a fight. I think the numbers are pretty even, but I think Mishi should end up winning this because the defender's advantage. Eventually, yeah, but Tatanka's trading pretty effectively. He is. The big thing is, will the Warrens stay alive for Mishi? And it looks like they will, so Tatanka gonna have to back out. But again, I mean, to Tander's point earlier, like, yeah, that was pretty good for Mishi, but he's just behind too too far in economy now. Right. It seems like all of the engagements here, uh, especially that first one where Tatanka attacked right as Mishi was selling his turrets, it's coming down to game sense. Um, Tatanka is sensing all of the weak points of Mishi, and Mishi's kind of losing his catch on where Tatanka's at. Yeah, like Tatanka went into that engage saying, I know I'm going to lose this, but the thing is, I'm just delaying his expansion. Right. So it, it's worth it, right? And here comes Mishi. This is basically his last hoorah. If he doesn't win this engage, which it doesn't look like he's going to, Tatanka's going to take this game. And now this is the third game that ended in the tier one phase. No. Man, Tatanka's fundamentals, he is showing a mastery of the early part of Tooth and Tail. I mean, Tatanka is, is such a favorite. He definitely deserves to win this tournament. Uh, but come on, we got to see some games out of Mishi here. Give your your internet forces, put put your hands up for the spirit ball that Mishi is going to need to take down Tatanka. Tatanka up 6-0, to zero, so this is match point. If Mishi doesn't win right here, right now, the show is over. 
Uh, oh my god, this is match point? This is match point, yes. Holy st In the wow. bottom, we've got Tatanka the Slayer, and up top, Mishi, the old school great, really needing a win here. Gonna go with the Ferret deck as well. Bigger map, looks kinda even. I like the spawn for Tatanka, but I think Mishi's okay as well. I think it's really coming down to the styles of both of these players. Tatanka is ready for Mishi's style, and he's just kind of cutting him off before he can get into his greed. Um, whereas Mishi is just not quite on top of the game sense for, for uh, what Tatank is up to. So let's see if Mishi can pull it back here with all of the pressure. I can't imagine a more intense situation for Mishi, but if anyone can do it, he can. Let's see. Now, a couple things going for, for Mishi here, though, I, I do want to point out real quick. Uh, for one, he gets a bit of the edge, you know, since Tatanka did go for that state foreign, as Kipo was just saying. But also, Tatanka's main is on the low ground here. So, if Mishi's really aggressive, that can be a real pain uh, Ooh, for Tatanka Mishi's to getting a little, bit, a little bit extra defensive here. He gets a warren and a turret, which means Tatanka's going to be able to take that lead back by getting all eight farms up. I think that is a sign of tilt. I don't really understand why he got that MG. He was being a little overly cautious and defensive. Uh, I don't know. I'm a little worried for Mishi. Yeah, the MG was definitely rough. I mean, he did see the early Warren from Tatanka, but building his own Warren was sufficient. So maybe he was just expecting a big, you know, triple tier one or something like that. But let's see. Mishi going to try to catch back up by a quick mill here. Yeah, and bear in mind, when we say Tatanka's ahead a little bit there, it's just a little bit. It's not the hugest deal. Um we're just worried that Mishi's going to keep making little mistakes like this and, and Tatanka's going to pull ahead. But Mishi scouts yeah. the uh, tier one from Tatanka, so let's see him defend. Yeah, that, that farm that might be a little greedy. That's what I think too. That's what I was about to say. Like, Tatanka's gone, gotten so much army, I think he's going to attack. Well, he does have MGs though, so maybe he could build that in a pinch. Yeah, I'd like to see an MG kind of like between the trees and that southern main pig. Uh, that corner pick there would be a pretty good spot to fight behind, I think, for Mishi. But Tatank is moving in already, and Mishi hasn't been able to get that turret down yet. He's going to put another Warren down. He's kind of behind on units there. Another farm. Yeah. Tatanka is a big army lead right now, and Mishi hasn't recognized this attack. He didn't put the MG down. Is Tatanka going to be able to take the game right here, right now? Uh, I think the longer Tatanka waits, the more Mishi's going to be okay here. Yeah. So just throw down the turret, so that's actually pretty good for Mishi. Oh my god, and Tatanka deciding not to go in, that's actually really big for Mishi, right? He did get those farms out a lot faster, and I agree, I I think I would have liked to have seen an MG before that farm, but Mishi, with his decision making here, it is going to pay off for him. Tatanka decided not to, uh, to go for it, so... What a yeah. scout for Mishi there. He does get off uh, the scout and sees the three farms and the tier two from Tatanka, so he, he should be ready. Yeah, Mishi is ahead right now. Like, definitively, I think, pretty dang far ahead in this game. Um, Tatanka is going to have a tech advantage, but I don't see that skunk going all the way across the map and doing damage. Mishi is going into Squizzer 2, which is the perfect answer. Yeah, let's There's going to be a second skunk here for Tatanka, and Mishi going all the way up to 16 farms. This is the Mishi that we love to see. Uh, is he going to grab a third base or get some tech here? Ooh, Mishi oh, Tom's going the, around. Yeah, Mishi did see those moving out, though, so he's able to quickly burrow and go home. But this is going to deny scouting for Mishi. He doesn't realize the double tier two is coming out, and I love that decision from Tatanka. The four skunk's going to be absolutely uh, amazing against this tier one army, but nice Passing? deflection. Okay, pathing works out. I was really scared for a second for those lizards. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they end up going through the now. water. Okay, Tatank is getting the wolf down, and he sells one of his lizard packs, so he's uh, he's basically just sticking with a small number of tier one and the skunks, and Mishi is teching into snake uh, snake ferret, so he's going to try to poke in here before Tatanki gets the wolf owl out, I think. Ooh, he I needs it. a scout. Okay, great scout here from Mishi. Sees a tier one, we're sold off. Sees a tier three, all the tier two. Let's see how he decides to respond here. Mishi is looking it... so strong this game. Yeah, I think he can do it, guys. I'm, I'm getting chills over here. Owl on the way as well. Mishi, though, throwing down a wolf, which is kind of sending mixed signals to me. Maybe that's just a backup plan if this attack doesn't quite work. I mean, Mishi has a lot of army right now compared to what Tatanka's got on the field, but man, that, that double skunk, you know. That double skunk thing. in that choke. He can't it's attack into that choke. Yeah. Right. 
I mean, he is going to lay siege to the space. I think the space is probably here just to kill time anyway. So it's not a huge deal if Tatanka loses it. But I don't see Mishi pushing all the way through anytime soon. Not with this defensive setup. Ooh, he might be able to get a nice comp cave here. He's trying to set up on the high ground. Here we go. Mishi diving in and needs to target down those skunks with his lizards. Ooh. And this attack goes very well for Mishi. Yeah, the skunks do go down and Mishi still has a snake and some tier one to keep pushing through as well. The uh, wolf is out and the owl is down, or sorry, the wolf is paid for and the owl uh, warren has been put down and Mishi's gonna keep pushing. Yeah, owl is supply blocks finally coming out now. I don't know if that owl is gonna see the light of day though. Yes. Mishi just might be able Ooh, to the expansion through. has gone down. The snake stacks on the expansion, Mishi pumping through. The ferrets, the snakes, the tier three is on the way for Tatanka, but it's gonna be a little bit too late. Let's see if he can clear out, but even if he does now, Mishi's just got such a big economy advantage. Well, yeah, that... I mean, don't don't sell to tank out yet because he's been in situations where he loses his expansion and wolf uh, owls never fallow, as he says. So, it's not completely <laughs> game over yet. But Mishi, if he can win this game, you know, if, if he could win any game, it's this one. Oh, I'm so yeah. hyped though. Mishi's got to get a point on the board, guys. He's got to win this one. Wolf Owl is out, and Tatanka is so dangerous with this combination. The thing is, Mishi has a wolf of his own, so he can't really retreat. You know what I mean? The snakes are just going to run that owl and run that wolf down from Tatanka. So Tatanka like doesn't have any skunks. Push. Oh, here Here's we go. The These Come MGs can, can soak up all the mice, and then Mishi just pushes all the way back home, right? Yep, yep. Tatanka's yep. first snake goes down, and the lizards are getting on top of that wolf. I think the wolf's going to go down, and this is going to be a point for Mishi starting the comeback. Oh my gosh, the tier three are somehow still alive. There's no way. Yeah, here we go. There we yep. go. Wolf up snake, man. So that's the first game on the board, right at match point. Here we go. Even Mishi was flexing this whole time, and he's just gonna win the series seven to six. He's trying to uh, he's trying to create some drama. Yeah, here comes a reverse sweep. Let's see it. But this is very stressful. Every single game is is your last life from here for Mishi. Mishi has to win six in a row against Tatanka undoubtedly the best modern tooth and tail player but definitely on you know big consideration top three top five of all time easily but here we go guys getting into i guess match seven we'll match five technically but we'll just go with the numbers here and the bottom left mishi still on his last life and up top sitting comfortably uh continuing to use that wolf owl composition we've got tatanka and mishi same deck as last time yeah, I think Mishi kind of pulled a quick one on Tatanka with that deck, because Tatanka, like I said earlier, Tatanka doesn't know which style Mishi's going for, but now that he's pulled it out, Tatanka might be ready for it this time. We'll have to see. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Mishi lost the early game, three games. And in that game, he actually won it. He finally beat Tatanka in the early game. He got ahead in Eco. Tatanka couldn't capitalize on his greed. Partially because of MGs, but you know what? Now that I think about it, he didn't even use the MGs. So Tatanka's unable to punish. I wonder if he's just going to try and match Mishi's greed in this game, considering last time, you know, building army didn't really work out for him. By farm double here for Mishi. Tatanka's going to get a scout on it pretty quickly, so let's see how he responds. But maybe Mishi can actually get a, ki a pig kill with two lizards this time. Let's see. Yeah, I think he I think he should honestly. It's looking like it's gonna line up that way. He has to lock this pig once it's on the outside. Okay, there Tatanka, it goes. It's on the outside. Tatanka's calling a bluff here. He's only gonna defend with one warren, so that's actually a bit greedy from Tatanka. Mishi should be able to get this piggy. Commando locks it this time, it's gonna go down. And he's gonna get away with both lizards. Oh, that's amazing. Very nice. That's so good. And yeah, since Tatanka's second warren was a little bit delayed, as Tander was pointing out. Maybe Mishi can come in here for a little bit more bacon. He's, he's got all six of his lizards up and running now. I think he can at, at least get another pig. Let's see. Well, Hopefully Mishi doesn't overextend, but he yeah. definitely has enough to get a little damage. And I, it looks like I he's like going to pull back. Yeah, I like that from Mishi. Better safe than sorry. Exactly. Yeah. No need to take a risk when you're ahead. And yeah. Mishi is ahead this game so far. He's thrown down his eighth farm. Tatanka just put his down. So well played by Mishi. Taking it again in the early game, just like last game. So I'm a little bit worried for Mishi on this map, Jen. I, and granted, most of our games have been these really scrappy one to two base plays, but Mishi's got to keep that in mind, and he's a good enough player to think about that. I mean, Tatanka's got all the money in the world kind of heading southeast from his main base, and Mishi's only really got this naturally taken now. I mean, these two mills on the west western side of the map, I mean, they're kind of no man's land. He can't really take those unless Mishi wants to try to, like, push with MGs or something. Yeah, this really has to be kind of a two-base style, and Mishi really likes grabbing that third base right away, so hopefully he doesn't uh, 
Hopefully he doesn't grab it too soon, but I think that last game was really the win Mishi needed to get back into a good headspace. So I think he's not going to make that mistake. Yeah, I don't see any kind of early aggression going down. I honestly could see us going straight up to eight farm from here, knowing these players, they probably both really want to greed. And that's what I see coming from Mishi, right? Taking that third mill, pushing with the turrets, pushing with the ferrets, oh, and trying that. to get something done. Yeah, that would be so old school. We don't see that that often. And to be honest, like, this map is, is pretty well generated for that, right? Like, Mishi could pretty easily leapfrog turrets more and more yep. forward with, with ferrets behind him. That's true. That would be a, that, it's a... It's an unstable play. It's easy to shut down if you're ready for it, but uh, I think Mishi could definitely try it. Wait, is Tonka seriously going in right here? I don't think he has an advantage at all. He thinks he does, though. Here's the engage. It was really nice from Tatanka, but is he going to have enough? Yeah, this is definitely going to be an army trade. No pigs, right? Right? Ooh, a couple units will pick Ooh. off a little bit of oh. bacon here. He gets one. Wow. Dude, that window. Like, how? how is that even a window? How is he able to take <laughs> advantage of it? No, it's because the road between their bases, but still, that was like the instant decision making from Tatank is incredible. I, I agree right. with, with Kibo there. It's really impressive. I mean, Tatanka just barely, barely had a couple extra tier one units and knew, okay, I can come in and make a little bit happen. Uh, really good game sense. Of course, that's what you'd expect out of the, the players here in the finals, but uh, never ceases to impress me. Oh, one thing I wanted to touch on from last game I thought was interesting. I've been kind of curious why Bishi doesn't have skunks against the owls, but. I thought it was really cool um, last time where Mishi was kind of building clutch turrets to kind of clear out the mice waves, you know, and then kind of counter push after those were dealt with. Exactly. Are you saying the turrets are kind of taking the place of the skunks in that way? Yeah, one? yeah. I thought that was Well, they're really just neat. countering the mice really well. Right. Okay, yeah, I like that. I like that. And he I can think, take uh, this third base right here like he just did and now build a turret wall, oh my God. which will nullify the owls pretty much. But does Mishi oh, want to take him? Oh, oh my dude, God! To take yeah, him out of the huge way. Pick. Oh, Even but is he going to be counter oh. He's got to. He's got to hold the counter attack here and put, maybe put down another turret. No, he sells. Why is he going to back? He's going to back up and put his turrets. Okay. Yeah, he's going to sacrifice that third to buy okay. time. Okay. Ooh, I think call. that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah, especially dude, after this... getting that many pig kills. <laughs> the tactics coming out of these players is so good. Just the game sets to go back, sack the mill. It's just 60 food. Yeah. He had a huge win. Build the MGs. Right. And now he can sell those MGs off and turn that back into economy or, or more units uh, when he feels safe. So what's he going to go for here? Some snakes on the way. Kind yeah, of, I was going to uh, say, I'd love to see some tech here. Yeah, I guess he's anticipating Tatanka's probably going to try to get into his own tier two. And yeah, here we go. Snake Ferret. Classic Mishi style. Guys, Mishi yeah. is so on top of his game right now. Like... I think he was a little rough getting started, but he's kind of hit his stride. Let's see, oh, yeah. Tank is going to try to punish here again. Can't do jack against those MGs, so that's a perfect defensive setup, especially with the mill there to help Tank. And Tatanka is kind of faking, because Tatanka does want to get into Wolf Owl this game. Um, so that's sort of, I think, his mindset right now. But really Mishi good... does get in there and scout yeah. uh, all of the tier two, so he knows exactly what's up, and he's getting his own game plan out. More snakes, uh, and he's going to start that farm. Classic Mishi's just going to go right into the third base, full of farms. Okay, here we go. We see the uh, territory limits of Mishi are way out in the map now, so he's got to buff off this uh, first attack from Tataka. No MGs here to support. Uh, good target fire trying to eliminate these skunks, but will Tatanka have enough to just push in? Mishi trying to sell some farms, but the rally should be able to push him back. Yeah, that's a pretty even trade. I, I kind of wish Mishi would actually use his turrets here in, in that kind of situation, but it's kind of tough. Yeah, the skunks are kind of what pushed Tatanka over the top. You know, Mishi doesn't have any skunks. Oh, are we lagging? Or is it just me? Oh, a little uh, bit of lag. Does anybody know who the friendly replay downloader is in the... Yeah, that's that's uh, that's exactly what it sounds it's like. A it's a bot. It's a bot. Yeah. Collects replays for uh, for posterity. There's a, so a website for it too. Tatanka wants to end this game. It looks like he thinks he has an advantage considering Mishi went into eco. Here's the attack. Really good lizard micro coming around from Mishi, avoiding that skunk gas. But does Tatanka Ooh. have too much? The squirrels are pretty much unimpeded at this Got a point. Little bit of lag here again. Just everything. Yeah, I was just curious. That, I, I don't know if anybody can control the bot, which is, which is cool. It's a great bot, but I just don't want it to introduce any lag or anything. Right. Well, I don't think mm. observers do cause lag. I think it has to be from the players, right? I'm not sure on that. 
I don't know why they're, you know, who's been getting the better end of these trades, guys? It's so hard to say. Hey, Tataka, I, I guess he thinks he has an advantage compositionally speaking. How much are the ferrets doing right now? You know what I mean? Right. So he's just going to keep slamming into this wall, but Mishi uh, is still ahead in economy. Yeah, Mishi I think needs Mishi's to get been doing... Go ahead. I, I think Mishi's been doing great, and his snake's being positioned on the bottom there. I know one's kind of frozen in the skunk guess at the moment, uh, to me anyway. But the uh, the snake's getting a really good angle and tagging a lot to tank his high tier units. Uh, yeah. It's been it's been really good. If you guys can fast forward, make sure you're at like 750. Maybe some of the lag desynced us a bit. But some of the MG walls are starting to appear here for Mishi, and this is exactly what he needed, Kipo, to start getting some utilization out of these ferrets here. Right, and he's gonna get some damage, right? There goes one pig, he's got a perfect defensive setup. You're gonna attack into MGs. Looks like Tataka's gonna force the issue, but the MGs are here to defend. Oh, Mishi looking so strong. Oh my the god! Tags, killing everything. The ferret's still alive here. Mishi gonna push in. He's got the snake, one of the most microable units in the game. Oh, can't, doesn't wanna lose it here. Two HP. Oh my god, Tatanka overextending a little bit, trying to get that snake kill. And this is starting to look like another Mishi victory here. This I totally desynced and I'm out, guys. Beautiful so, play by Mishi. Yes, that sucks, Tander, but we'll we'll make sure to get you back on uh, the next match here. It, it, sorry about that, everybody. We just had a little bit of lag issues on this game, but I think it's sorted out now. Tatanka with his last stand, but gets cleaned up. I think he's going to tap here, but no, Tatanka never says die. He's going to sell what he can, try to re-rally, try to get what he can to defend, but Mishi just doing too much damage at this point. Yeah, I mean, it's a really nice defensive Ooh. setup, but the thing is, Tataka doesn't have much behind this. Mishi, look at his third mill. It's almost fully farmed. It's amazing how Mishi's able to farm up, put on aggression, lay down the turrets, position his army, and just do everything perfectly. This is his style he's really been thriving with, and it's just awesome to see, because barely anyone else can pull this kind of play off. Yeah, meanwhile, Tatanka does have the third base up and running, trying to start farming it up, but yeah, that's one of the biggest uh, key indicators of a very strong tooth and tail player just knowing when they can kind of i always call it like sneaking in a farm in between engagements you right know? like not getting too crazy but you know just grab another farm here and there mishi looking for whatever damage you can get looks like he wants to take another big engagement here not committing yet though that choke is pretty rough with the skunks yeah he's able to get some warrants which is really nice he's finding the the spot that he could uh exploit here Tatanka still does have a nice tier two army. Look, they just micro, they go right for the snake tags. And that's gonna be it. Nice, okay, Mishi uh, starting to come back here in this match. Um, okay, so t uh, Tander, are you good? Yep, I'm back, thank you guys. I, I'm just yeah. gonna watch the stream and catch up uh, <laughs> two minutes behind that. and see how it all went. No, it's good. So we're at six to two now. Six Mishi two. still on just one life, but I guess the pressure is actually giving him the uh, the determination to, to push back now. Yeah, he's yeah. really found his groove. Gonna keep the same composition going into, I guess we'll call it match nine here. And here we I'm go. A little, I'm a little worried for uh, for Mishi it, sticking with the same comp here. Obviously it's working, but eventually Tatank is gonna have an answer for it or a lucky deck and that's all he needs is one game. Nice uh, uh, short rush distance map here. I really like the map for Mishi, guys. I know it's going to sound kind of crazy, but the thing is, he could really cut Tatanka off at two mills. If Tatanka takes those two mills and Mishi takes the map and throws up a thousand MGs, Mishi's going to be sitting really pretty in this game. Let's see if we can get there, though. Yeah, I agree with you. I think if, uh, if Mishi reads the situation as quick as you have, then I think he's definitely got this. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, he takes this center mill, right? Throws up some MGs, kind of contains Tatanka. Then he can start taking all these other bases. My eyes are really on that 3 o'clock base in the back. And yeah, Tatanka's got the lizards, but if Mishi's up on the on the front lines and he's kind of watching the chokes, watching maybe this sneaky way through the water here in the south. But even still, I mean, look at Tatanka's uh, ramping out of his main base. Like, you can't just sneak out the back door into this water for like an Apocalypse Now uh, kind of ambush. He's got to go around the front. I like already this setup for Mishi. Tatanka went with a 7 farm safety warren, which isn't a huge deal, but it does give Mishi a little bit of an edge here. Uh, Tatanka definitely can afford to play safe because he's got plenty of lives left, but uh, but yeah, I think Mishi's got a good edge. 
I'm so excited. Six to two. Here's the big comeback, you know. And again, I, I think Tatanka, uh, uh, both these players obviously deserve the win. But just for the hype, just for the show, it's really cool to see Mishi punching back. And, you know, it would be awesome if this went all the way to, to match 13. Yeah, yeah I mean, no, right now, ahead, just sorry. a mirror. Yeah, it's just a mirror right now. We kind of have to see who's going to deviate first from this pattern. I assume they're going to go six lizards, six squirrels. That's what it looks like. Is Mishi going to be the first to buy a mill? This is exactly what happened in the first game that they played. I just have a feeling that he is. It's just, which mill is it going to be? He's kind of he's kind of walking around this main one here. I think he wants to grab it when Tatank is not looking. Here he goes. Yep. Oh, oh no. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Tatanka grabs that first mill. Yeah. That's okay, though. That's okay. As long as Mishi doesn't try to punish and overextend. You know, he's got the whole map, like Delphius was saying, to catch up. Uh, right. He's just a tiny bit behind, so it's fine. Oh, man. I can't wait to see these turrets right here. They're going to be so oppressive. Let's see how Tatanka's going to be able to deal with them. I mean, maybe that's not what Mishi will go for, but come on. You got the turrets. You got the ferrets. You got to be looking at this map, Jen, and, and you're uh, salivating as a, as a ferret right. turret player. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, oppressive is a good word for it. I like that. It's a very uh, very flavorful flavorful word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, Mishi's already got the defense down. He already is ahead of Nico. Tatanka, does he have a window? It doesn't look like it. He's teched into skunks, so that signals to me that Tatanka wants to play very defensively, sit back on two base, and get his wolf owl out safely. He has successfully denied Mishi scouting that skunk so far, which is really good. And there's the wolf already, so oh, Tatanka wow. just going right into wolf owl. That's crazy. And you know what? If Mishi's not careful, it's going to work. Uh, he's got to get the scout off and, and have an answer for it, but he doesn't go all the way in. Ugh. Yeah, this, this is a very clutch moment in the game here. Mishi has to know that Tatanka's starting that big bad tier 3 transition. And if Mishi pulls the trigger, he might be able to catch Tatanka in a situation where he's got like 400 food, 600 food that's kind of accounted for but not on the board. And that's ideally when you want to come strike in. A little bit of lag. Okay, I think we're fine. Yeah, we're okay. We're okay. Oh, we're, God, we're it's stressing still alive. me out. I know. I'm I was good. stressed out there too, but... Yeah, I mean, Mishi finally gets to scout on the Wolf Owl, so that's pretty good. And I think maybe Tatanka wanted to end this game kind of quickly because he was seeing the same things that we've been talking about, right? right. An MG wall and a two-base lock-in. So oh, yeah. that, that Wolf Owl, the same things. right, that Wolf Owl is going to be out at a nice time. Looks like Mishi is going to try and punish before it gets here, though. Uh, he has no. a pretty small window, though, because he scouted late enough. The Wolf Are you guys already not lagging? Coming. No, we're good. I am lagging. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I think it's his dang replay downloader, man. Yeah. Well, he he left it... the lobby for me. I don't know. Is, or Mishi's pushing in here. Yeah, I think this this attack is so good for Mishi right now. He's gonna get the mill. Can one of you go is... live on uh on our call? I I am like stuck on the lag screen. I think I'm about oh, to yeah, lag yeah. out. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. So we're here streaming tooth and tail. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go Sorry live. guys, we're gonna try to we're gonna okay, try to fix this. Yes. Hang on. Okay. And if he gets this mill, he'll win the game. So, sorry, I know this is so weird to cast like this, but this mill is so low right now, and if Mishi could just kill it, he's got to put everything into killing this mill, but the mill is up, and that means that Wolf Owl is going to get out. Yeah, M Mishi has so much money, though, he can kind of afford to take a couple of inefficient trades, and there's no way of healing this mill. Now, Dude. Mishi has to be careful not to, like, try to target the mill and lose everything doing so, but if he can get in there and, and kill it, it's this is it. This is so close. No. Okay, okay, hang on. I'm trying to fix this. Sorry, everybody. Wolf Owl's here, though. Here we and go, I think okay. With Wolf Owl right now, I don't know that Mishi has an appropriate answer. Two MGs isn't necessarily enough. He does have the snakes, and he is going to get a, a couple critical units, and he is way ahead in Nico. I don't know which way this game is going to go, honestly. Nico just sold down everything but two snakes, the Wolf Owl, and he's going to get another skunk, so he's just barely barely got enough here and let's see if mishi's gonna grab another yeah mishi's just gonna tech up he's comfortable or he's comfortable. sorry he's gonna eco up he's gonna i wouldn't mind gonna... seeing another mg or two though that's the thing like the mgs are gonna de decimate those mice like he only has two his army is looking pretty good but the wolf owl and tatanka can always win a game you know what i mean oh yeah oh yeah like... absolutely these mice getting on top of snakes mishi's got to pull them back one snake does go down but that's it and so that's pretty good. Uh, you know, mice are free, so... 
Misha's got to be careful. Losing a couple of snakes like that is no good. Again, I, I love those greedy. MGs, man. You know, just cleaning up those those mice waves like that. I think after Dude. this match, let's uh, maybe take a quick break and, and reload the lobby. Hopefully that'll help with the lag that we've been having a little bit here. Sorry about that, everybody. But I think we have yeah, a Misha workaround for the, now. Misha needs to scout Tatanka's farm. So Tatanka is with... Uh, his forward positioning here, he's keeping Mishu from scouting, and if Mishu scouted those farms, I think he would know he has to push in, but here we go, Mishu's gonna start pushing back, lots of nope. snakes here. This is it, I think this is it, I think it's gonna stop him right here, I mean, those the snakes, snakes are uninhibited. Go down. The pigs are going down, this mill is gonna go down again, and Tatanka will be actually starving, so he's gonna let the mill die. Oh, you know, he's just gonna keep pushing, he's just gonna get yeah, snake tanks on it. all these units. I think he did it. Oh, ho, ho, man, Mishu coming oh, back, my God. this is so hype, so well done. Okay. Guys, Tatanka is still ahead six to three, but uh, we've got ourselves a series, and Mishi is pushing back. So it looks like we're ready for a break. Yeah, I'm gonna try to reach out to this friendly neighborhood. Yeah, right down see if we can. It, it's it's yeah. pyro. popping. It's, it's pyro. It's, it's spamming going in and out of the lobby. Yeah, we need yeah, to. Uh, we need to fix that lag. I think we should just rehost the lobby. Let, let's take a quick little little break here, see if we can get that sorted out, and we'll be right back in just a few minutes, everybody. So three to six, though. Mishi starting the comeback. Super exciting. Yeah, like Ed, the way he's doing it too is he's beating Wolf Owl at its own game. He's using MGs. Who knew that was one of the answers? Dude, yeah, that is sick. Uh, and he's done it not just one game, so it's not a fluke. It's actually a thing. So, yeah, the I'm pretty sure the Friendly Neighborhood replay is, is run by Pyro. He changes his name in Discord all the time, though, and I can't find it. <laughs> yeah. He's got to have an off button somewhere there. Let me, let me see. Tooth in detail. I've got messages from him a while back because he asked me to be a beta tester for it. Oh, there you go. So I just have to find him. Oh, man, this has been such a good series. It's really been living up to all the hype. Okay, his name right now is Scub. I'm going to private message him. See okay, if he's good. On. Good, good, good. Looks like he's offline for right now, but let me see. Okay, I am back. I am going to restart I found, the game. Yeah, Delphius, I found uh, who owns the Friendly Neighborhood Replay Analyzer, and I think he's offline right now, but I'm messaging him. So if there's a way of him temporarily turning that off, that'd be great. I, I mean, I'm not sure that's it. It's just one possibility to get out of the way. Okay. Um, so I'll let you know if he gets back to me. I, uh, I hosted a new lobby with a new password. Oh. Is it uh, you DM'd it or something? Uh, yeah, I'm sending it to the, to, the, to the group now. Got it. Okay, sorry oh, about man. that, everybody. Uh, thank you, Tandor, for starting your, your Discord uh, stream so quickly. I think that was uh, a nice little uh, mulligan or way to keep it going. But we're three to six now. So as I was kind of freaking out trying to get things happening, so tell me a little bit about what happened there as, as we we're uh, trying to keep the stream up. From what I understand... Uh, Mishi did successfully see that Tataka was transitioning to Wolf Owl, pushed in with Snake Ferret, was able to get the the, ex the main expansion base and then kind of keep pressuring from there. Yeah, I mean, the way that Mishi plays, and this is, I think, the one of the de facto like best ways to micro in these scenarios, what we're seeing from Mishi and Tatanka, no defensive micro. Just get your snakes and start tagging down priority units. And their snakes were actually tagging down each other in some of these engagements. So yeah, just having more snakes, you know, having the, the ferret shell at the mill to take that out, he's just able to break through. And this is something that we've seen the community struggle with for so long. How do you break through a defensive Tatanka? And Mishi has been experimenting for like the past like two months with how to do this. He's tried moles, he's tried toads, snakes, 
Ferrets, Tier 3, Master 1. I mean, that's what we saw Trumpet do in his variation, right? But this style with a lot of snakes, with some ferrets and a bunch of tier one, is just really working out. And he was able to take out Tatanka, who was turtling on his ideal comp with pretty much ideal circumstances. Like, he didn't screw up the early game. Tatanka got out what he wanted to get out. He met, he was meeting his goals. But Mishi, man, he's still able to push through. Yeah, that's pretty crazy to me. And if somebody was going to tell me that the counter to Wolf Owl Snake was Ferret Tier 1. <laughs> I'd be like, what are you smoking, man? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, it's it's Ferret Snake Tier 1. Yeah, that's uh, true. The, the snake is a, a very important part. Yeah, sure. and guys, we, we all know that snakes are really, really strong in this patch, in this meta. So, you know, Mishi's just going, okay, let me find a different way of, a different way of working with snakes, and it's actually working here. Yeah, and, and then just being able to cut the map, right? to hold Tatanka back and then throwing down the MGs, that's a really, really good way to counter Owls in the late game, is you have that spam MG button available to you. And we were able to see him, you know, throw down those MGs, have them eat up the mice, and then counter attack. I, I'm really liking how, how viable MGs are this patch, just because they're such an interesting unit, um, because they build so fast, right? So like a, a really good player, and you, you can see those clutch MGs out of Mishi. I mean, Ideally, with an MG, you want to build it at the last second possible, you know, buffer off the attack, and then sell them and get back to business. And, and Mishi's just been doing such a good job of that. And again, you know, really utilizing those turrets on the front lines to deal with the mice and then move in and, and clean everything else up. Okay, looks so, like we've got both players ready to go here again. So this is still match point. It's six to three. So Mishi needs to win four in a row. That's right. Or, or Kipo needs to or, or, uh, Tatanka needs to win so that you and I can both have our predictions uh, correct. <laughs> that's oh true. god, that's true. <laughs> ah man, it's such an uphill battle from Mishi, but the thing is he has the momentum going for him. Like even if Tatanka gets a good map where he could hold back on two or three bases, Mishi's still able to push through. So, dude, I'll be so hype if Mishi wins this tournament and can claim the hero title Ugh. and can prove to the community that they were wrong about Wolf Owl being OP. Oof. Dude, it would be well, the most hype thing in, in, like, the entire year of Tooth and Tail. Well, well like, hold, oh well, my hold God. on a second there, Kipo. Just because Mishi can do it doesn't mean your, your average, uh, your average Andy gamer is gonna, is gonna no, be able to do it's the No, but it's owl. a symbolic victory it's for true. every, for right. every gamer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, Tatanka trying to get back into the match. So, while we got a little bit of downtime, uh, Tell us, tell us about the intermediate finals. Don't forget, everybody. You know we do have really great viewership here, so I, I appreciate everybody uh, coming on to check out the finals. But this is not it. It's the Big Tooth and Tail weekend tomorrow. We've got the intermediate finals coming up on Tander Draco's stream as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. At this time tomorrow. So it, for me, it's 4 p.m. CST or 4:07 CST. So at this time tomorrow, we're going to have Meek versus Exnor, and uh, Exnor is a Wolf Owl player. Um, yep. Sometimes, but he's got a lot of other styles as well. And Meek is the previous premier champion. That's so right. um, while we're there, Tatanka here is the uh, previous intermediate champion. So that's kind of you know, crazy. We've, we've kind of got him switching sides here. Switching okay, right. in the bottom this left, is... Tatanka still on match point. In the top right, Michi trying to download and figure Tatanka out, honing in on this uh, Squizzard Ferret Snake style. Is it how many finals uh, have we seen or casted? I know Delphi, you've been around for a while, where both players actually just use the same deck game after game after game. Um, so right. the only other player that that kind of reminds me, well, two come to mind. Uh, Erlu was kind of had that going with his really strong tier two deck and, and his mole pushes, and then this guy, uh, who kind of patented the classic this guy push. Uh, which really utilized uh, squirrel, mole, pigeon, skunk, and then I think he had like badger to get into the late game. Uh, but those two players are the only ones that really ring a bell that, that kind of stuck to the uh, I've got the holy grail of decks, this is what I'm going to use. Um, other than that, you know, yeah, most people like the gentleman, like Meek, uh, are, are typically play pretty flexible. But Quick Lizard? Ooh, he oh, does force a sell. It was almost done. That's a oh, huge sell. I don't know if you sell. need to cancel that, man. That was so close, though. And that's going to give Tatanka, I think, a little, little, little bit of an edge. If anything, it's a mental edge. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You could see Mishi sitting there for a second going, do I need to sell this? Do I need to sell this? Can right. I not? And then he did. I think you're right. He didn't need to. But, you know, it definitely was a close call. 
and Tatanka is got to feel pretty good about this uh, this opening. I really like this map for Mishi's Ferret MG style. Again, we kind of have a lot of these uh, mills in the middle. Tatanka does have a natural, you know, that's kind of towards the south of his main base. But, you know, Mishi should be able to get some good turret placement again and, and be able to to harass with ferrets if that's what it comes down to. Tatanka still looking for something with lizards, but backs out for now. Yeah, yeah he's... He's... Go ahead. It's an easy map to, like, uh, ferret MG crawl to your opponent's base. The one thing it doesn't have going for it is that you can't cut it in half. There's always going to be two entrances to Mishi. So if he clogs one up with MGs, Tatanka's just going to go around. True. Yeah, with lizard play there, for sure. The other thing to watch out for is it's going to be very hard to deny scouting. So uh, unlike last map, where Tatanka could kind of keep Mishi back from scouting for so long, Mishi should be able to get there and, and scout whatever Tatanka's doing if he tries hard enough. Now, one thing I do want to mention about Mishi, since I've seen him play in so many events and I've known him for so long, I mean, he's such a cool, chill guy. Like, if you ever watched his streams or, or some of the videos he made, he's kind of a sweetheart, and I don't think he's the type of player to tilt. I don't think he's going to be freaking out. Like, I, I think he's going to be calm and collected while operating against match point, as we've seen him take three victories in a row. So I, I think mindset is something to keep in mind here. You know, Mishi, I, I don't think he's going to get broken mentally. Oh yeah, yeah the, the kind of like chill it took to win three games in a row like that, I think is is incredible. He yeah. did seem like he was a little bit under pressure for games uh, uh, points four and five for a little bit there, but now that he's set, I think he's going to be fine. Like you the, said, the, the thing is, is he relying a little too much on MGs uh -oh. here? Because here's the thing: right now, Tatanka has a nice attack lined up. He's got more units than Mishi, and that MG, I don't know how much it's really going to be used. Oh, that's actually, actually like great nice. position for that MG. Yeah. yeah, I was worried too, but man. Yeah, Mishi, we we got to believe in Mishi here. Now, Mishi's actually overextending a little bit, but I think he's happy with the trade. I mean, farms are equal, so it's fine. Oh yeah. my god. I, I was with so you good. there, Kipo. Like, I didn't think that was going to be enough, but since that turret was, like, so far away in the pocket, it was just giving out free DPS. Yeah, now, bear in mind, Tatank is only three... He's only one tier one warrant ahead, so it's not huge, and that's the other reason why just one turret for Mishi was able to hold. So he's going to get some more tier one and and drop the turret, but Tatank has got a backdoor uh, the minute he busts this cabin. The I think ferrets... Mishi should have heard that, though, so he's ready. I'm a little worried about the Ferrex, guys. I, I think Master 1 versus Master 1 Ferret is my favorite Tonka, but, but until we get there, there's a nice attack coming in from the Tonka. He's going to get Ooh. one pig, but yeah. that's going to be it. He's going to lose his whole army for it. Mishi might be able to counter. Yeah, is there a well, counter push can, here? Mishi can counter, or he can just take his army lead, and when you have an army lead, then Ferrets are good. Right. So I think this right. might be the uh, the opening for him. Look how far his territory is stretching out right next to Tonka's expansion, too. Once these ferrets are here, maybe a couple forward MGs, and, and we might have checkmate on our hands. Right? Yeah, it, 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 it's, unless Tatanka goes around and, and uh, counterattacks from the north. Yeah, but then we'd be, be in like a base straight scenario at that point. Yeah, here That's we go. True. Here are those forward MGs, and Mishi coming in, going to start bringing the pain. And yet, Tandra, you're absolutely right. Uh, Tatanka can just try to go around, but Mishi is smart, and he left turrets up there as well. Oh, oh my yeah. god. Mishi's looking really good right now. Tatanka put down the wolf, and that was a crazy play, in my opinion, because is he going to be able to sustain Don't the pressure? The commander. With... Oh my right. god, 3 HP. Oh. Okay, yeah, Mishi needs to not lose his commander here. Now, Tatanka is just playing for time. He's got to get his wolf owl up. But yeah, that wolf Mishi... is so greedy, man. Yeah. Oh, I'm so uh, worried about Mishi's so commander. Get back to the turrets. Get to the chopper. Ooh, uh. okay. Two, the both ferrets do go down, but they definitely paid for themselves there. Tatanka is on basically no farms. Mishi's going to sell his forward position, get back, and spend all his money. Uh, probably gonna... Okay, he's just teching like mad here. We're going to see the wolf owl probably get up, but... Mishi's going to be ready for it. I mean, Mishi's so far ahead right now. I mean, he has an economy. Tatanka's down to a single farm. I, I, does oh does Mishi God. just push through right here and win before Wolf Fowl even comes out? Look, the Wern's still building. Yeah, Mishi just scouted too. The double tier three knows his opponent's super greedy right now. He knows he's got an edge, and he's going to come in here and try to get up to four points on the board, but the Wolf does come out. Mishi's being really patient here. He's got his lead, and he's not so scared of the Wolf Owl that he, no that he has to kill before it comes out. So he's not he's not rushing it, but here he goes. He's going to take this high ground. He's going to back up. Wolf Buff Skunk doing work right now. They're just deleting Mishi's Tier 1. Hey, maybe this is all Tatanka needs. Maybe he doesn't even need an Owl. 
that Owl does get paid for. I was a little bit worried that it might have uh, got supply blocked as all the new tier one are getting used, but Mishi's Snake commander tag. goes down. Snake tag on the wolf, but just one, and like you said, the, the commander goes down. Now the skunks are also being picked off by uh, Snake tag, so hey. Mishi is, uh, I think he actually got enough value out of that. Yeah. Okay, Tataka with Wolf Owl coming out in a dream, but I think Mishi is just pushing in with too much damage. You can almost just right click on the mill now. Right, and there it is. The mill. Oh, 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 there we Mishi go. Just crushes another game. What is Tatanki gonna do? Dude, I don't know why he went for the wolf. Honestly, like, he, he was doing okay, and then he put so much into that wolf to get it out, and you saw Mishi was able to capitalize. I mean, we know he's gonna use Ferrex, we know he's gonna use MGs. He's gonna try and break Tatanka before the Wolf Owl comes out, and that's exactly what he was able to do. All right, guys, four points on the board for Mishi, working on his reverse sweep over on the left-hand side. Same deck out of both players on the left. Playing Hopper is Mishi on the right with the Quartermaster Tatanka. And tell me what you guys are thinking on this map. I think it looks good to go to a macro game. A little bit rougher. Tatanka's got this nice little island base in the back, but getting a right. third might be kind of hard for him. Yeah, I that think it's true. I think it's Mishi favored again here, but only a little bit. And guys, we've got two competing ideas here. First is Mishi has the counter to Tatanka's play, but the other competing idea is eventually Tatanka's going to figure out how to play against it. Like, that's true. I don't know. There's a timer here, but I mean Mishi's already beat all of the community's expectations. He's gotten more points than anyone that I got uh, a prediction from counted on, so this is super hype. Double tier one on five, scouted by Tatanka. Going to go home and be able to respond appropriately. Doubt we'll see Mishi even bother moving out. Yeah, he's going to sell one down right. and keep uh, farming up. So Mishi, uh, Tatanka actually with two. Huh. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of worried about an attack, so it makes sense, but... Um... Yeah, I think at the end of the day, they're just going to juggle these warrants back and forth, and it's probably going to be a wash. Yeah. All right, Tatanka going to move out with a couple lizards when Mishi has a few of his own. He'll be just fine. And, yeah, no, uh, nobody getting really hemorrhaged here in the early game. We're just going to kind of advance to the mid-game. Uh, no harm, no foul, it looks like. Think about it. This would be even 4-4 if Tatanka didn't have those two points to start with. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That is definitely true. And I, by the way, the, the it does make total sense. And, and the reason for anybody kind of tuning in, Tatanka did start uh, the best of 13 series 2-0, and that's because it was a double elimination tournament. Mishi came back through the loser's bracket. Tatanka never lost a series to anybody. So that's kind of his little extra victory for, for getting to the finals through the, the winner's, uh, winner's bracket. So if you don't count that score lead there, Tatanka won the first four games played today, and then Mishi has won the next four games played today, um, and which puts Tatanka on match point. But here we go. Here's a bit of a push coming in from Tatanka. The turret is definitely there to get a little bit of damage and chase Tatanka back. I think Mishi's just fine. That turret yeah. was amazing. Like, putting in that little bit of damage to give Mishi a, a little edge here, but Tatanka does have more units, I, I think. I think Mishi's fine, though. Oh my gosh, that mill was like at one hit point. The building mill actually tanking there, and that's actually huge for Mishi. I thought buying that mill was a bit of a mistake, but dude, Mishi is playing so clutch right now. His turret placement is phenomenal, and buying that mill is paying off uh, really well for him. Tatanka does have uh, a couple of farms of his own started up, but Mishi's not far behind, and we all know how he can catch up in a, in a farming. Yeah, it's uh, pretty rare to see a mistake out of Tatanka, but he was just a little too aggressive there, I think. Yeah, now, like you said earlier, Mishi is not one to tilt, and I want to say neither is Tatanka. He, he's he been in rough situations before and kept his cool, but I don't know. Is he starting to get nervous? Do you guys know what country Tatanka's from? He's European, Sweden. right? Sweden? Sweden. Okay, yeah, so this is the classic Europe versus NA uh, that we do see time and time again. Into yeah, where's history. Mishi from, for the record? Uh, for Mishi the, uh, is for the originally from Peru, I believe, but he now lives in the USA. Cool, cool. Yeah, both players going up to full uh, eight farms on their nats. And you can see Mishi's just a little ahead in economy. He's just a little ahead in warrants, a little ahead in money. So taking a nice early game advantage, and he's going right into those ferrets that... I look at it and I say it's a little risky, but it ends up working out. Ferrets and snakes. Interesting. I love it. I, oh. 
I, I got I, excited. I, I thought it was double ferret for a second. Oh man, yeah, that would be crazy. <laughs> no, I mean, because ferrets are good when you're ahead, right, in army. So I, I love it from Mishi. Now, Tatanka buying a forward mill here? Okay, never mind. He, he was setting up for a but potential it's, attack, but... It's weird. It's a little bit of indecision we're seeing out of Tatanka, you know what I mean? And he is going to go into that mass lizard, mass tier mm. one style. And I He's think this counters in. really well. It just depends on the turrets, I think. Yeah, I agree. The snakes and ferrets really... Uh susceptible to mass tier one like this but the that's what the turrets are for so it's really gonna have to come down to where mbishi uh places these mgs and win yeah right. tank is going into mass tier one here and he might be able to run over this ferret push uh mishi's gonna go ahead and grab that mill that tatanka was kind of thinking about grabbing a couple of times tank is gonna kill it but that lets mishi get the first volley off here's the engagement there is no turrets here to help but there is a snake and some more in tanking it looks good from Tatanka. I mean, I don't know how much these snakes and ferrets are really doing right now. Mishi is able to hold with his Sim City. He always has Warrens in front to tank for him in situations like this. Yeah, only losing one Warren there. But again, no turrets made that a lot more uh, brutal. Tatanka able to get some damage in there. But let's see if he can handle the follow-up. I'm really curious where uh, Mishi can fit down some turrets. I think they're going to be very crucial here. There we go. A couple turrets getting started. And Mishi wants to take that milligan to extend out his uh, territory as soon yeah, as he can. Yeah, now tank is going to push in before the turrets are done. If the snakes stay alive, as the armies trade, the snakes are going to get more and more value. One snake does go down. He pulls uh, back, but the turrets finish up, and Tatanka has to pull back. Oh, it's really good play from Mishi. He's able to hold. Tatanka is just staying in for too long. So, yeah, you're right, Tatanka is just kind of all in on the tier one, and we did see a little bit of indecision from him, so I think he's getting a bit nervous. Here we go for another attack out on the open. Oh my Again, god, he needs to pull back here, he loses a Ooh. snake, he's getting a little bit too big for his britches, he really needs to expand out a bit further with these turrets. I mean, I can't stress enough how critical they are against this mass tier one. Yeah, so he does pull back to the turrets, and he does keep his ferrets alive, one's kind of running in place there. Uh, <laughs> But I think Mishi's gotten so much value, he's still pretty far ahead here. So he is going to be able to safely take that mill and move his turrets forward. Tatanka decides, I can't take this poke, it's just way too much, and he goes into snakes. But it's a fairly late transition. The snake isn't even started to build yet. There it goes. So is it going to be too has little a, too late? It might be. Mishi has a tech advantage here. But how much can there he really get go. done with these um, with these ferrets? I guess he's just going to eco up. Man, this turret oh, crawl. Oh, oh Tatanka down with the flank! Okay, Mishi scouts the tier one over oh there, God. but is his response going to be quick enough? The t lizard's getting right on top of the Warrens. Mishi's going to have to come back and fight from behind here. Super smart from Tataka. Even before the engagement starts, he knocks out a couple of Warrens. Mishi going to be able to clean this up pretty handsomely, though, and that might have been yeah. too big of an army victory for Mishi. Tataka taps oh. out. The Mishi. counter push there for Mishi was going to end it, and, and Tatanka knew it. So Mishi's actually won oh more games God, today. Guys. Oh it's six God. to five. This Dude, is insane. this is amazing. This Mishi is... is not letting Tatanka get Wolf Owl out, guys. Now, okay. I was going to say this is the most hype, but if I recall, I think we had a similar situation uh, in a previous season's finals where it was Gentleman versus Erelu, and Erelu ended up coming back uh, right. and reverse sweeping the Gentleman. I can't remember if it was from zero to hero, but I, I remember it was, it was almost this exact situation where Gentleman had him by the throat and he came back. Let's see if Mishi can do the same thing. Again, going to stick to this composition. He's got Tatanka downloaded, and I think Tander made a great point earlier where, uh, you know, Tatanka probably doesn't have a lot of practice against this exact cop from Mishi because it's kind of like Mishi's own thing that he's invented. Hey, but Hold up here. Hold up. Look yeah. at what Tatanka is doing. He he's needs to not, deviate. He's, he's thinking, trying to yeah. think about <laughs> he needs What to is deviate. he going to do? Get is he going to pull out a turret? I think he might do turret or something. No, no turret no against, the, against, against the ferret. ferret. Yeah. But the thing is, he needs to deviate because the problem yeah. is he's not getting Wolf Owl out. It's okay. not a part of the game. He's playing a four-unit deck against a six-unit deck. Ooh, balloon. I he, like it. Right. If he could just get some like other units out, some no. team uh, works here too. He almost did it. Oh, he's no. He's gonna stick with it. You know, hot take here, guys. Hot take. Uh, game thirteen oh, no. or game eleven. Tatanka needs to go Fox. I'm just gonna call it right oh, now. Oh, I would love that. All right, guys. In so the hype. top, still continuing to climb back from zero to hero. We got Mishi, and still on game point. In the bottom, just needs one map to take his crown. We've got Tatanka. And Tatanka is showing a little bit of nervousness by that deck selection there. Of course, that's not something that Mishi might be picking up on, but. Uh, he is sticking with the same deck there. How is he going to use it differently here? 
And again, one thing, uh, I, I want your opinion, Kipo, on, on this map, Jen. But again, I, I gotta point out, like, we've got that, that Grismal Crawl, you know, for that, that Ferret MG style. I mean, she can kind of get up and up and up towards Tatanka's base. But Tatanka does also have this uh, kind of roundabout way through the Swampland that he can go, you know, another attack route, maybe a base trade scenario. Yeah, it is yeah. a donut map, so the lizards could flank, right? Right. I mean, it is a pretty long way around. Um, but the thing is, Tatanka doesn't have a, a mill to expand to. Yeah, Tatanka's closest oh, that's mill there. There's true. a wall of there's a wall of trees that kind of. Oh, sorry, Tatanka down here in the green. Oh, I'm so bad. Yeah, Tatanka's gonna have to reach out a ways to expand. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, typically. You gotta at least have that natural base, and if Tatanka can't, I mean, he's got the lizard, so Mishi's not gonna be able to, to give him the run around too much. Um, but yeah, Tatanka would have to kind of stretch his tentacles all the way here to the center of the map to take these two mills, and imagine if Mishi takes this one on the high ground right there, starts getting some turrets, starts getting some ferrets. Considering that and the mental condition right now, uh, Tatanka could be a bit nervous. This map is actually really good for Mishi. Um... If this were map one, I think Tatanka could make it work, but right now I'm a little nervous for him. He might just be lizard all inning right now. Kipo, you you with us, man? I saw you having a little bit of trouble there with the spectator. No, I, I, I'm not with you guys. It's okay. Let me stream Discord to you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, Tandor, uh, saving the day as usual. Uh, this seems like the lag issue went away after we all reset, so that's good. Uh, but still a couple little... Little issues here, but I, I think we'll be fine. So Mishi gonna grab that second base, and again, you know, uh, as you were saying earlier, Tander, I mean, is Tataka just gonna all in on, on one base here, or is he gonna try to expand? Yeah, and Mishi's being pretty careful with it. I think he knows that Tatanka might, you know, they both took a little extra time to scout the map, so he does actually sell that expansion to get some more tier one down oh. as Tatanka is moving forward. Mishi also does have turrets, and it, it, you know, that's gonna set him up really nicely if he's able to get them down. Tatanka is trying to put pressure on this expansion. Yeah, Mishi hasn't seen that Tatanka's taking his own expansion yet. Tatanka did force a sell, but Mishi got his mill back up pretty uh, quickly, so these mills are going to finish around the same time. Now Mishi knows that Tatanka's going to farm up. Did he see both farms? He did see both farms, so... Yeah, and he fake rallied in, but Tatanka didn't bite, um, so they are going to both farm up here, and we might actually see just a stable game, and the distance between the mills for Tatanka might not actually come into play now. Oh, put it's that possible. put that turret on that one tile right there on that high ground, brother. Man, Come on. This Ugh. this is looking really nice for a siege, though. Am I right? Yes. Like, oh yes, the high ground. Are you kidding? I mean, even the fact that Mishi could retreat back to that high ground with the choke there and be so uh, defensive, but he is getting super greedy here, and Tatanka wants to push in. I don't think he wants to let Mishi have that high ground. I mean, he basically has to play the whole game with his army sitting here because he can't let Mishi put MGs down, right? Right. So he always has to have his army in the middle of the map just in case Mishi goes for an MG. There it is! There it is! There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and Mishi looks like he's going to be able to sell his low ground MG, farm up, and it's going to go down. Tatanka is kind of in trouble. Yep, yeah. I think Tatanka, he is. Uh, already getting the snakes, which is going to help, but Tatanka not uh, going to have any high ground vision unless he can run his commander up there. You know, he doesn't have any pigeons or falcons. He does have the owl, but that's a little bit later. But speaking of that, it looks like he's coming back to throw down his wolf. There it is. Yeah, there's the wolf. So Tatanka has to trust in the wolf owl coming out. And oh. Mishi already throwing down snake and, and uh, ferret. So Mishi, with this ferret snake timing just able to push to tank it down before the wolf owl comes out it looks like and we've seen this in a, in a few of the similar matches haven't we kipo i mean this almost is the exact same thing where tatanka's getting the wolf mishi kind of scouts it he gets his ferret snake and he goes right exactly so we'll have to see if mishi can break tatanka before that wolf owl comes out it looks like he's kind of posturing this time around though tatanka did get a very early snake i, I like that adjustment so the snakes are already here to, to try to uh, get into Mortal Kombat here with the ferrets, but the poke is yeah, starting. Yeah, you, you get some counter potential, and it it doesn't shut down Mishi's uh, poke potential, but it uh, it really slows it down, so it might buy to tank at the time, and the wolf is started here. The snake is going to move in and get a tag on that mill. Talking yeah, going to dive in. going to have to force the issue. No MGs. Okay, now the MGs are starting to fire a little bit, but really good, uh, really good engagement That's... there for Tatanka. Yeah, that's really good. He's got snakes and skunks here, so I think he's got everything he needs to to uh, keep dancing with this poke comp from Mishi. The wolf is, the owl is blocked. 
Now keep in mind Tataka is starting to lose farms to the siege, but these MGs for Mishi are just not quite far enough out where they're really uh, helping in these engagements here. Yeah, the thing is, Mishi has so much more econ behind this, he can afford to trade out a lot more tier 1 and, and fight inefficiently here, if it just means he can push forward. The wolf is out, going to be buffing to tank his couple of units left, but that mill expansion. is going to go down. That's a Ooh. dead expansion! Three stacks! Oh my god, is it going to live? Does it look uh, like it? Oh, oh my yes! Gosh. Oh my god, so Mishi's going to have to throw one more tag yeah, on there. Just, just click it! There, there it is, alright. Right. And Tatanka loses his snake as well, and his, wolf, his owl is still supply blocked. Oh my gosh. I feel like we've seen this game before, you know, Tataka yeah. losing that second base, now he's hunkered down with no economy, he does finally get that composition he's been looking for, he's gonna try to take this third base as a ninja, but is Mishi just too far ahead? It's a ninja or it's a base trade opportunity as well. True. I, I, Tatank is just not able to greed up his wolf owl against this aggressive poke comp so masterfully played for Mishi. Mishi just targeting in here, going to kill the wolf, going to kill all the tier oh two. Oh my god, and we're going to Tatank game 13? Is... Oh yes. my goodness. The height. I can't believe this. I couldn't Tatank ask for... his grip here. I couldn't ask for a better present for my weekend. Like, this is amazing. So bear okay. in mind, the score is 6-6, six to six, but Tatanka won four games, and Mishi has won six in a row on this comp. Yeah. Is, so... is Tatanka going to adjust and change his strategy? Is, this is, is where the fox is... comes out. <laughs> right? Like, he needs to, I think. Dude, he what if to, he changed into, like, also... a cam-toed fox, you know? Just something crazy like that. Guys, if Tatanka changes his comp and loses, he's going to hate himself forever. So I don't oh, not hate yeah. himself forever. That's a little dramatic. But right. no, I mean, I'm a caster. I've got to be dramatic. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a good point. I mean, what got him here is this comp. Like, what? don't panic. You know, keep calm and carry on. Uh, use the comp that you're comfortable with. Keep. A, are you okay now? I see you in the lobby. I'm going to try. If they get kicked out, I'm not going to try and re-enter. But I'm okay. here. Yeah, okay. I, he's thinking about it, right? He needs to think about it. Like, uh, there's a balloon. There's a balloon. Deviation, finally. Yes. Okay, he's going to stick. Is he going to stick oh, with the it, though? cams? Oh, oh, he teased me with the cams. <laughs> oh, my he's God. Still thinking, so at the, the question drawing here, board. Does he get, does he dare shake it up here? <sighs> That's a hard one, Tander. And I, I honestly, I think you're right, man. Like, you got this far with Wolf Alla now. But that's the thing. I mean, Tooth and Tail is all about being dynamic and being able right. to make these kind of decisions. He knows how Mishi is playing against them. It's a safe assumption that Mishi is going to keep doing what he's doing. So Tatanka is kind of on the spot where he's, he's scratching his head like, how do I counter Mishi's composition? I wonder if Mishi's thinking about switching out the MG for mine. No, he just undid his ready check. I mean, the fact that Tatanka is taking so long might psych out Mishi here. Um, like, like Mishi might try to pick something else to counter what Tatanka might go into. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a little right. bit of mind game here potentially. Man, if Mishi <laughs> wins this game and wins this tournament and becomes the hero, the one to defeat Wolf Owl in the finals, finally, the first one to take a game off at of Tatanka in this bracket, and now potentially taking this series. After yeah, battling yeah. through losers, after going to game seven against player after player after player, Mishi has bring on the brink of death so many times this tournament. Oh my god, wait, balloon? Okay, no, ferret, no ferret. D dude, you're right. He first one to take a game off of Tatanka, and he actually just takes six in a row. Like, okay. what the hell? <laughs> He's on fire, dude. He is completely on fire right now. Is, we're kind of, we got the caster privy to the uh, little banter between the players right now as... Tatanka is taking his time. He's deciding how he's going to approach this. He, he's kind of realized Mishi's got his number here. So, again, I, I mean, I hate to sound like a broken record, but Tandor, I think you nailed it. I mean, Tatanka's stuck in this hard position of do I try to be dynamic? Do I try to adapt? Or do I do what, what got me to here to the finals? Yeah, I, I think what, what I would say as a just, like, mental game or RTS series coach, if I, if I was in that position, I would say... Tatanka needed to try something different like a uh, game or two ago. Right. Yeah. Like, you know, after losing four games in a row, then try something new. Don't wait until now. But he's really up against the wall. And if this is going to be a victory for Tatanka, honestly, that would be hype as well. Because at this point, it would be a comeback. Okay. So uh, the, the yeah. players are requesting a, uh, a break here. Uh, you know, this is a very stressful situation. So... Uh, they're they're gonna take a few. They're gonna get some water. 
uh, figure this out. And I think what I'll do is I'll just go to this screen right here. I, I, I mean, these guys are not going to stream snipe or anything, but just I, I prefer to not let that deck selection just kind of be going just so there's no question, you know, of, yeah, of yeah, that it's sort all good. of thing. So I, all I did was I pulled up the option menu until these guys are ready. Um, so, yeah, really, uh, really stressful situation for both players here. Uh, six to six in the grand finals. Uh, I guess while we got a second Kipo, I mean, what what were your thoughts on the the changes made this time around to the to the format? Uh, what are you guys thinking moving forward? Any news uh, on other events coming on in, in the uh, scene, or, or maybe uh, I mean, we can talk about so many things. The upcoming balance well, patch. I got, I got a couple of things, but yeah. let's let's go with Kipo. What are your thoughts about the the format first here? I, I like... think it's been great. I've really enjoyed it. I mean, the double elimination, the storylines that you get from it are really cool. Like watching players battle through the loser's bracket and then get all the way here to the finals, I think is a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I think it's been an awesome tournament so far. Uh, I have a lot of people putting a lot of work into it. I got to give a shout out to my main man, Epicosity, who's really just taken this entire burden and put it on his shoulders alone, running this whole tournament, and it's been so much fun. So... Big shout out and big thank you to Epicosity for making this happen. Yeah, absolutely. One of my favorite things about this uh, series is that it's it's traded hands like so many times as people kind of get busy with real life or kind of come in and out of the scene. I mean, uh, this was actually started, uh, the concept of TNT Championship was started by Best Sakia NA uh, several years ago. And it went from Best Sakia to The Gentleman to Mochaccino, to now you and Epicosity. Uh, so it's really cool to kind of see the torch getting passed on, on people because, you know, I, I can't stress enough and, and uh, how, how important tournament organization is, how much work it is uh, on the back end to, to really keep the scene alive. You know, I mean, this is why people practice. This is why people hop on and play the game. And it's a fun game. It's just kind of a hidden gem. So when you know I've got this tournament to prepare for, it really uh, incentivizes you to, to hop on to, to play some matches, which encourages other people to play, and you kind of get a snowball effect. Yeah, and to kind of hop on the, that train there, um, by the way, just going to throw out again tomorrow at 4 o'clock CST, yes. Intermediate Finals, going to be super hype as well. Same best of 13 with Meek starting ahead 2-0. to oh. um, I don't know if it's going to... If it's gonna equal this amount of insanity, but you know anything from Meek is crazy. So uh, just gonna hype that up real quick and then uh, speaking of hidden gems the next Event going on is gonna be gents tournament. Uh, the 21 duels fall season is here He oh, just nice. announced it like earlier today or yesterday or something. That's awesome. So yeah, let me find that real quick so I don't misrepresent anybody, but uh, Yeah, if you have uh, a link, can you throw it in the chat? I'm trying to find here uh, you know, I can't find it under pressure, but guys, keep oh, yeah. Whenever, uh, yeah, whenever yeah, whenever you get it. But uh, I do know that it is going to start in a couple of weeks here. The bosses have been picked, and the testing of the various stages is going on. So the thing about the 21 duels is it's all funky rules and restrictions, like different maps or different unit restrictions and stuff, and you battle through uh, bosses. So those have been picked. Um, I, I don't know if he's released the list yet, so I won't spoil anything, but definitely watch out for that. I, I actually got a link to the Discord. He always uses the same Discord. Yeah, the 2021 Duels tournaments are always super fun. Looks like this is going to be our Season 9, so the ninth Gentleman 2021 Duels tournament. And I always kind of think of these things as, like, board games. Like, the Gentleman's some kind of genius, man. Like, he, every season, it, it's almost like we're playing some really uh, complicated board game, you know, except for instead of rolling dice or, or playing a card, you play a game of tooth and tail to, to do the outcome. So it, it's always a lot of fun. I got a link to that Discord, guys. So if you're watching yeah. now, uh, join this Discord. If you'd like to participate in the next event coming up, uh, Gentlemen, Season 9. Very cool. Yeah, Thank you, Tanner. Definitely... I didn't realize uh, that, was, that was happening yet. Yeah, yeah, definitely check it out. Even, you know, it's open to anybody to play um, and just see how far you can make it in that run. But if you're not interested in playing, definitely check it out to watch because like Delphius is saying, it's it's pretty unique stuff, pretty interesting um, way of approaching the game and it's super exciting. And I know he has all of his stuff casted and put up on YouTube and, and, and stuff. So yeah, I definitely just, check that out. I just want to point something out, of you know, sort of reflecting on this series and reflecting on the games. You know, the community for so... It, 
I feel like there's so much that we don't really know about Tooth and & Tail and that is unexplored. And the, the opinions shared by people are so strong in, you know, the unit discussion and the Tooth & Tail Discord. How long have we been hearing about ferrets being underpowered, ferrets needing uh, being needing to get buffed, ferrets being useless, ferrets being one of the worst units in the game? Then Michi yeah. comes into the finals against the best player in the highest level Tooth & Tail series of the year, and he's crushing with ferrets game after game after game. Against the comp that everyone says is overpowered, the wolf yeah. owl snake. Right. Now I still so will, like... uh, I'll still highlight the point I made ke uh, earlier, Keepa, though, is that just because Mishi can do it doesn't mean the ferret isn't underpowered. Or no, that no, but Keepa's not saying that yeah, but I understand good for saying. everyone. Yeah, yeah. He's just saying that it's, it's capable of being yeah. good, clearly. No, it, it's just, a very yeah. interesting point because yeah, exactly. This unit that's totally discounted in the meta that everyone kind of generally agrees is not that strong. I mean, we see Mishi winning game a game against the best player with the best deck. It's insane. Yeah, it just goes to show you that this game is a lot deeper th on, than what it shows on the surface, I think. You know what I mean? Like, you really can make these styles and these strategies work. Um, anything is viable. You know, yeah. it's, it's all just about reacting to what your opponent has. And right. this MG style is just proven to be so good against everything that Tatanka is bringing to the table, whether it be Squizzard, whether it be Owl. You know, the MGs are kind of just stopping everything. And Mishi's able to just put himself in a position in the middle of the map, get that defense up. And Tatanka has just been crumbling under the pressure. So, you know, I. I don't know. I'm I'm so torn as to whether we're going to see an adjustment from Tatanka. I, I really don't know. It's crazy because if this were a best of one, I would give Tatanka like 90% odds of winning the game. But because of the series and the history already in this best of 13 that's gone into this, I don't know, guys. It looks like Mishi has the momentum. Yeah, oh, it, absolutely. It's almost kind of funny where I... How do I put this? Like, I agree. I think if it was a best of three, Tatanka would win. I think if it was a best of seven, Mishi would win. But I think when we get to the best of 13, like, Tatanka's had so many games to download this style, and that's what he's doing right now. He's deep in the, uh, he, he's deep, deep in the think tank. You know, he, he's yeah. trying to consider how the hell am I going to deal with this comp that Mishi has? And since we've given him so many games, since it's such a long series, you know, maybe Tatanka can, can cook something up for this last match. Yeah, and his style is dynamic enough, but to counter that, Delphius, Mishi is an old school player, and he's also been through a lot, and he's ironed out so many styles. So, yeah. I don't know. And, and what's, what? One more point on it, too, is that I, I love seeing it because this this ferret turret, I mean, I know it's not, it's, it's pretty intuitive, but this is something we saw a lot way back in the day. So, Mishi is almost playing this, like, old school style from a different meta, to be able to, to take down what Tatanka is uh, putting forward today. I guess the only difference is the snakes here. Back in the day, you, you normally would have falcons because they were much stronger. Go ahead and pop oh. back to the unit selection screen there, uh, Delphius. Yeah, Tatanka has selected his units, and it is really surprising. Maybe he thinks that, that Mishi is going to change it up, but he does select the MG. It's yeah, I'm telling what... you, this yeah. is what... This is, like... MGs are not good against snakes or ferrets necessarily, but this is a version of this deck that Tatanka has played before. So he's shaking it up a little bit and going in a different direction, and it's something he's good at. So I, right. I, I think I like it. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Mishi vs. Tatanka, game number 13. The players have had their break. They've been able to walk around, get a drink, stretch out, think about how they're going to approach this last game. Here we go in the right, the modern meta champion, Tatanka. And on the left-hand side, the old-school pro on his way to a reverse sweep. We've got Mishi. And look at this weird map. <laughs> Guys in the chat, hype up your uh, hype up your favorite here. Yeah. Throw some Tatankas, throw some Mishis in there. Let's let's see some uh, let's see some fire emojis. Yeah, I, I kind of like the Tatanka dropping the skunk. I don't know how much it's really been serving him against Mishi's Squizzard. The lizards are really dancing around the skunk gas, so I think it's a pretty good adjustment. I'm just going to have to see how that MG does. But on this map, I'm going to say it, it the, the turret push is not as straightforward. Right. Y you know, there is a choke point and there is a lot of water. Um, 
so he's kind of just going to have to go forward. But yeah, it's, it's a weird map. Both players can definitely get their three bases up and running. Um, we're going to have to see if we can get there, though. Yeah, I kind of I kind of would like this better if Misha had gone with the Badger play again, but I don't blame Misha for sticking with what's working here. Now, to take or er, uh, Kipo, to tank a drop skunks, and I know that's usually what he drops in this situation, but how have the skunks been faring for him against Mishi? Have they been like an invaluable piece or are they kind of worth dropping? I think it's it's the the natural unit to drop in this kind of situation. I mean, there's just been so much squizzard. The skunk gas has been so dispersed, and I don't know how much it's really gonna help. If you have squizzard on your own, there's really no need to go into skunks. I feel like. So it looks like Mishi is going to be the first one to expand. Tanka is going to throw down a little more army. Pure Lizard too. So he is going to have some offensive options here if he wants to go for them. Yeah, Wait, what now is this? a couple of things to note. Tatanka did get the expansion and sold it. So he's trying to fake out. But Mishi is definitely scouting it enough in time to, to be ready. Also, there is no back door for, uh, for Tatanka to go back to Mishi's expansion. So oh, I think yeah. Mishi's doing all right here. Yeah, if you actually look at the map, there... The ramp is through Mishi's main base. That's a very good point. So you've almost got like a pocket base here for, for Mishi. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, I I kind of disagree with you, Kipo. If Mishi can get this uh, base that's southern to... Well, I guess that's a tall order. But if he can get this base that hasn't been taken yet, I mean, I think that's pretty decent to, to try to get the turrets out. But yeah, maybe you are right now I'm looking at this more. It is going to be a bit harder to do that, that classic Mishi turret push. Yeah, that mill would be pretty clutch. Actually, we have Tatanka going up further ahead in Eco than Mishi, which is sort of a change up for this entire series because up until now, Mishi has always been the player with higher economy. Mishi's Ooh, going for Mishi a pick. Tatanka's out of position. Oh, oh my god, he gets some dead! Oh! oh. <laughs> Good Dude. for Mishi there. Good uh, slam dunk from Mishi. Gonna pick up that pig for free. Coming on back, still tier one from both players. Both players trying to get that second base economy rocking and rolling, but no major, okay, I was gonna say no major decisions just yet, but there's a big one for Mishi, just going straight YOLO to 16. As yeah, big as that farm kill was for Mishi, the mental blow is huge too. Tatanka's oh, right. trying to come back and he just loses a farm for free, that hurts. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you know, we did talk about how Mishi's got a really good mental state, but come on guys, I mean, I don't care who you are, in Tatanka's shoes, this has got to be so stressful because he was sitting there kind of laughing with the Chad laugh at 6-0, and and all of a sudden it's 6-6, six to six, baby. This is it. This is game point. Yeah, and Mishi's already started. Ferret's on the way. We see an MG on the map, and here's that wolf. This has been no. exactly what we've been seeing game after game after game. Maybe that maybe Tatanka didn't need to change his deck, but he just needed to change his build. Like maybe the early wolf has, has been his uh, the nail in the coffin all these games. I'm not so sure. I mean, I, I get it. You know, you gotta get going what you signed up for. But yeah, but can Mishi really get a siege on a map like this? It looks like uh, it's gonna be a challenge, and he's Run gonna see around. if he can get some free damage done. Uh, no ramp, bad ramping to get into the main, but he should be able to scout the wolf with this. No, he doesn't go. Deep enough Ooh, that's going to lose Lizards for free. Oh, no. Tanka, yeah. That is Killing a rare lizard. mistake. That is Tanka huge. popping down some turrets here as well. He just wants to get his Wolf Owl up and out. And the turrets aren't great against Ferret and Snake, but it will blow Mishi down a little bit at least. I'm It'll really worried down, for Mishi exactly. now. That, yeah, that, was a, that was a lot of Lizards for free. His scout was late, but now he does know that that Wolf Owl is on the way. And Mishi hasn't started the siege yet i guess he's got the tools ready but he's I yeah mean, typically... he's got the tools and he's got the funds so here comes the siege he's gonna buy that mill and he's gonna start poking down to tank again to tank a hold on long enough or is he gonna lose his natural yet again now keep in Ooh. mind uh it it has been this the story in these last few games that when tatanka's wolf is out that second base has already been destroyed but this time around tatanka is holding firm he's got the wolf he's got the second base oh, losing the commander oh snakes uh for tatanka going down and the commander, yeah, right there. Yeah, now, but the, like you said, the wolf is out and the owl is almost out. So it's like, wolf owl will be out in this game and it looks like the Tonka will have his whole mill up. Now Mishi's floating so much food. I'd love to see him throw some turrets down in the front there, but he's gonna go with some farms and some more squirrels. I don't know, I think the turrets would do it because the wolf is about, the owl is about to pop out and Tatanka hasn't lost, he's lost one pig. Surprisingly, so the turrets, do it. Tanner was right. These turrets were the right call against the ferrets. I mean, yeah, eventually the ferrets kill the turrets for free, but with Tatanka, yeah, he uses just time. 
Yeah. yeah, tempo, exactly. I, I think Tatanka's gonna do it here, guys, which is about the most hype way he could have ever won this, but it's not over yet. Yeah, Mishi can still make something happen. I think he needs to get some frontline turrets down, though. Yeah, I think the defensive turrets for Mishi would really be it. He was floating, like, 500 food there, so I think he had an opening in the last that he was focusing so hard on the poke. Tatanka, with so many turrets, he's so safe. He's just gonna get free value. Now, the thing is, Tatanka doesn't have an expansion. So he's got to rely on the free value here. Mishi pushing in. Uh, just... Unfortunately, it's just not enough, though. Without any kind of AoE, without any kind of turrets, Mishi is buying a lot of time and stalling, but I, I think he has to kind of make something happen here. Yeah, and he can't just AA move into those turrets. He's got to be, like, sniping snakes or something. Uh, yeah, he really, needs, up or... he really needs the turrets to mitigate against the mice. But, I mean, he does have a big enough clump of units where he's not taking horrible trades here. But eventually, the mice will overpower and, and just become too cost-effective for Tatanka. Yeah, yeah Mishi. now, if Mishi was ahead a bunch in farms, like if he had eight farms on his uh, base at the top, he would be able to afford throwing Tier 1 into the turret line. But as it is, the eco is pretty pretty even, so he, he can't afford to lose all his, his wizard. He's also supply blocked at the moment, which is really rough. Such good control of Mishi's commander, too. I mean, time and time again, we've seen him retreat right at, like, 1 HP, 5 HP. Uh, losing that commander would, would most likely be checkmate, so... Uh, no, either player. Yeah. Right. Now, I mean, with all these snakes on the table, it's like anyone could die at any moment. I mean, Mishi, if he just gets money snake tags on that owl or that wolf, he's going to be able to take this game. And in this war of attrition, Mishi's actually doing pretty good. I mean, stonk has got the yeah. free mice, but Mishi has the tier one. Yeah, the problem yeah, is the, these the mice can't, can't meet the, the mass uh, quantity that they need to be super effective. And Mishi is slowly getting these turrets down, but Tataka creating more. So this is back and forth. Both these players are, they've got their comp and Mishi is expertly managing this. But Tatanka does have the tools he finally needs. So I, I don't know. I Mishi's seconds from disaster here. I don't know. The thing is, Mishi has such a nice economy, and, and Tatanka is running out of units. He only oh, has one snake. wizard and one scroll left. Oh my god! Tatanka's... The snake goes down for Tatanka. He needs his snakes alive to have any kind of counterplay, and he's only got a couple of turrets. Mishi's going to be able to push in and shut down these building turrets. Oh my god, oh my you guys. God, I Mishi... Think Mishi has this. That control I think Mishi's got was it. insane. A tag on the wolf, and that's it. Tatanka doesn't have any buffer, and he's starving now. And no mill to move back onto. He's going to back up. Dude, these ferrets were rock solid. I mean, if you go back and look at this engagement, oh there, there were several spots where the ferrets, like, killed a snake or, or something like that, you know? And that really made a big difference. It's, there goes the mill. finally goes down. Tatanka has 43 seconds left. And, guys, this is where Tatanka did actually have his comp up, kind of where he needed it, and Mishi still microed without blinking for a second. Mishi's commander goes down. It looks like he's going to lose his whole army, but Tatanka's going to starve. How can Tatanka build a farm? He only has 25 seconds left. I think Mishi's done it. I think Mishi's going to take this series. And here we oh go, guys. Mishi with the reverse sweep. Mishi against the wolf owl snake comes back, oh and there it is. Oh, GG. Mishi. GG. Oh, Mishi my God. Mishi is our grand finals champion. Two championship belts on the uh on the table for mishi now so man what a series back. and he had the loser's bracket disadvantage but he comes back so guys the answer to wolf owl <laughs> if you're mishi clearly is this ferret snake turret push that was uh, the most hype thing since erla versus gentleman up on the uh <laughs> right there with him Okay. Oh my god, it's just absolute insanity. For him to reverse sweep in a best of 13, oh, that's probably never happened in the history of esports. Dude, it's never We're happened in the history. history of Tooth and Tail, that's for sure. <laughs> guys, we, are, we just made history. All 46 of you viewers, or however many there are, you guys have witnessed history right now. Okay, hey guys, real quick, we're going to end this call, and we're going to start a call. I, I mean, typically we do a winner interview, but honestly, we're all so tight. Like, let's just hop on with Mishi and Tataka and... and and chat yeah, for a bit. What do you guys think? If, so, if they're ready. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to disconnect from this call and we'll start a call on our other uh, chat. So, bam. And man, what a series. Let's get the uh, let's get all the boys here on the line. Uh, we've got, so first and foremost, <clears throat> congratulations, Mishi, our grand final uh, tournament champion. How stressful was that, man? S doing the reverse um, sweep down six games, had to come back seven in a row. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, my hands are shaking. Well, first of all, like, 
hands off to to the tank. Uh, that was a crazy good match, and obviously could have gone either way. I could have been the seven <laughs> out. Oh yeah. Uh, gosh, I mean, that was stressful. If you had blinked, Mishi, right at any moment, oh, it would have just been it. That the micro in that last battle was was so intense. So. Mishi, man, <clears throat> Kipo made a good point earlier about how the ferrets uh, really were kind of your defining unit here, and they're a unit that in the modern meta, uh, you know, are kind of underwhelming. So it was really interesting to see you come up with that ferret approach against against Wolf Owl. Yeah, I mean, for people that have been seeing, um, you know, what I've been playing lately, I've been playing this deck, and this was essentially my my secret weapon against Wolf Owl. Uh, the whole point is that. I do the tier two push, but typically like snake skunk stops everything, especially like snake stops um, ferrets. So the idea is I bring my own snakes and kind of helps push. Right. Tataka, man, I, I know it's a it's a rough loss, but you played so well. You're you're easily one of the best players in Tooth and Tail. How how are you feeling, man? I know it's a it's a little rough after after the loss like that, but man, those were some crazy matches. Yeah, I. I, I'm lost for words. I don't know what to say. I, I can just say that, Mishi, you are, in my eyes, the greatest Tooth and Tail player of all time. I have no idea how to beat that. I was so just helpless. So I have a question but, for you, Tataka. Yeah. Was that, were you unfamiliar with that style? Did Mishi kind of sneak that one up on you? Oh, I, I've played against the style of Mishi before. Right. But never like never like this. Yeah, that was uh, that was crazy. And in Mishi too, you, you started off with a lot of tier one uh, in the Badger, and then after a few games of that not working, you kind of switched out. I mean, what what was the thought there? And it, it seemed like once you honed in on that Ferret Snake MG deck, you, you kind of stuck to your guns with it and, and got you all the way to the the championship victory. Well, I had a pretty complicated uh, list of decks and kind of like whole series of strategy. And that involves like cycling different styles in, but you know the 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 ferret snake was very very effective, um, so I stuck with that. I, but um, yeah, I mean <laughs> the badger wolf tier one just got crushed. Let's say that I had a few strats against Wolf Owl, and and one of them worked, and the other ones didn't. So Kipo, Guess what this means, man? Mass of Stealth is gonna have to assign Mishi the hero of Tooth and Tail Tag in Discord oh my God, forever. I love it. That's amazing, Mishi. You're gonna be a hero for now on. Were you aware kinda... of that, Mishi? I did. Yeah, yeah, I was aware. But I mean, regardless, I, you know, I, I don't like uh, Wolf Owl. I think we both know that. So I, I was going to play without Wolf Owl, regardless. Right. Um. But this was like. I mean, the the hardest challenge I've I've had so far in like you know Tooth and Tail, and I've played like a ton of tournaments right since the oh, game launched. Oh yeah, launch. yeah, yeah. You've been here since the beginning. I mean, countless countless tournaments you've uh, you've been in, and you've always gotten at least to uh, top four, uh, top eight, and a lot of them. So Tatanka, man, I mean, winning intermediate last season, coming in, almost beating Mishi, as as you said, and I think a lot of us agreed, probably the goat of Tooth and Tail. I mean, again, I know it's it's rough off the loss, but you got to be feeling good, man. I mean, you you've came to the top like so quickly. Oh yeah, I mean, it was a rough loss for sure, being six zero and then losing seven games in a row to a strat. I just couldn't outplay, but I, I, I'm gonna have to figure out how to beat that. But yeah, I, just playing in the tournament and coming this far, having at least this much success, it does feel great. And if I was going to lose to anyone in the finals, it was going to be Mishi, because I just like Mishi as a player. So yeah. It, it was not a, as rough of a loss as it could have been. That makes sense, yeah. And, and not only that, but I mean, you're you're doing a ton of work in the scene. You know, you're constantly casting with Kipo and Tandor, uh, covering a lot of the events. So uh, big kudos to you. But man, I feel like I've been hogging this interview. Tandor or Kipo, what, uh, what kind of questions do you guys have? Well, I just want to I just want to tag off that. Ta uh, Tatanka is going to be the co-cast for tomorrow's intermediate finals. So hyping that up one last time on my channel there, it is going to be Tatanka, a newer caster in the scene. 
uh, with me, so that's going to be super hype. So that's what I got. Uh, also, I just want to... Oh. Sorry, go, go, go. All right. I know. I just wanted to also like thank all the players um, that helped me practice against Wolf Owl. I was like bugging the whole Discord saying I need Wolf Owl victims, and like a lot of folks stepped up to to help me practice against it. I just want to say, Mishi, that was a masterclass in Tooth and Tail. You know, the the community has been saying for so long that there is one strategy, and that it is the best strategy, and that it cannot be beaten. And here in the finals, Tatanka not losing a single game, coming up from the loser's bracket, going series after series, going to that final match with the reverse sweep against Tatanka, who hadn't lost a game. It, it's the most dramatic and epic storyline, and you did it in the coolest way, using something like Ferret, which has been, uh, you know, considered one of the weakest units in the game. So I have a tremendous amount of respect for you, man. That was an awesome series. And I do have one question for Tatanka. Going into that final game, you were on that uh, unit selection screen for a while. What were you thinking about? Were you going to drop Wolf Owl? I thought about it. But then I thought that, you know, Mishi's style, it doesn't just work against Wolf Owl. That style works against any deck, really, on some in some scenarios. So just dropping the Wolf Owl is not going to negate how effective that strat is. So I, I considered a lot of options and thought that, I you know, I considered picking his deck or picking some Ferret Balloon style just to keep him at bay. But then how am I actually going to win? So I settled on just having MGs and Snakes instead of Skunks. Which I'm not sure if that's the correct answer, but I didn't change much. But I, uh, you know, I did consider a lot of things and I think yeah. that style and that especially when Mishi plays it it's just very effective and with the economy behind it I mean it was a war of attrition mice versus tier one for Mishi Mishi was that like extremely stressful from your perspective did at any point yeah. in that last game bear with a wolf owl bearing down on you that you think like holy crap I might not win this yeah I thought uh, I was coming in too slow with my tier two push uh, as I scouted the wolf a bit late, and I wasn't sure if there was going to be a big deck change, right? I was expecting maybe like a like a boar push or something. Um, but so I was a little bit late on the scout, and yeah, I was worried that it, it, I wouldn't make it on time. But I just I just barely made it, and there were like so many times where I I thought I threw, like there were times where my commander was one health, and I had to keep using my commander to push and put pressure. And, it, and even at the end, like, I was starving with, like, 30 seconds in the timer or something like that. Or 35. Um, and, you know, I was saying, oh, does does he have another mill? This can't be possible, you know? <laughs> and, That's like, one thing. Like, those things are in my head. I was so impressed on that last engagement, Mishi. Yeah, I mean, it was time and time again. You got your commander out with, like, 1 HP, 3 HP. And I, if either side lost their commander there, I mean, that was it. You know? Oh, yeah, it was, like, neck snapping. Like, if your commander had died you would have lost the game like within 10 seconds probably and oh, and same oh, yeah. thing for Tatanka there if, if Tatanka your commander had gone down that would have been just complete instant obliteration I think because the snakes yeah there was, was an insanely close fight considering how long it took like uh, both sides just kept fighting and, and since when a do, long time since when does the wolf or the uh, owl actually lose the long drawn out fight usually they're the ones that gain value over time but uh, the ferrets there and the snakes yeah that was well, just I was, I was in his face essentially so is he doesn't have time to build um mice and also it's just one owl right if there's two owls then it becomes unmanageable but with just one owl i can fight it with my tier one and tier two i think so do you guys have you guys looked into the upcoming balance patch at all any any hot takes any strong feelings one way or another um, to be honest, I've been very, very focused on the current patch. Right. So I, I haven't looked at it too much. Well, I... Hmm, yeah, I don't like many of the changes. I understand you need to do something about Wolf Owl, because that's just what people do, or what I do. Uh, <laughs> but the like the snakes change, I think, is weird. The skunks uh, having more ranges could work. I like the toad change, but all in all, just combined 
with all the changes, I am looking forward to the new patch. I think there's going to be a lot of variation. It's really interesting. I, I think some of it needs a little polishing, but yeah, it's, it seems like it'll be interesting. It's always fun to just shake things up with these patches, you know? I mean, since we're generally not a game that, you know, we're really expecting expansions or, or radical, you know, new units or anything, like just fine tuning some things, you know, oh, hey, moles are super relevant for a few months and then they're not relevant anymore. And that, that just kind of keeps things fresh. So I like that a lot. I also like that Eel is pretty slick on timing his, his patches. Like imagine if the new patch hit a week ago or something, you know, oh, well, you, yeah, guys no, are, forget it. <laughs> you guys are preparing for this. And then we're going to say, well, we're going to play the tournament on the previous patch and then it's going to be a nightmare to practice. So uh, hopefully Eel can sneak the patch in, you know, obviously after this uh, season of the championship is done, but then maybe like before the gentleman's next event or something, that'd be really cool. So we play the next event on the new patch, you know? Hey, yeah, really quick, said, speak. Go ahead, go ahead. He, he said he would like to get it out in December. So yeah. that's that's what he's, uh, you know, aiming for. And I think that would be pretty awesome going into 2022 with the new patch, sort of, you know, a revival to the scene, getting everyone on, everyone playing. A lot of players, Jacoby and a bunch of others have said, sure. I'm going to come back once this new patch drops. Yeah. So really hyped so, so real quick i want to ask both of the players here too um what are you guys' thoughts on the gents thing are you going to participate um i don't know if either of you are bosses or anything but looking forward to that next uh, i'm very much looking forward to it um let's just say i'll make a surprise appearance oh <laughs> <laughs> so. Very cool. Yeah, the gentlemen's tournaments are always a lot of fun, man. Very creative stuff. But all right, you guys, I'm sure y'all are exhausted after playing uh, arguably one of the best series of Tooth and Tail of all time. So any final words from uh, from from anybody? Just just free for all, man. Take it away. Well played. Well yeah, played. well played. And you know, also being so humble because you know <laughs> this. It was such a long series, and such an involved series. Um, right. I'm glad that we can talk over the games and just have a good time. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh... yeah, that was an incredible display of skill. I mean, I've never seen that well played of a Tooth and Tail series ever. That was absolutely immaculate, and I, I was so happy that I got to watch you guys play and cast it. Just well done to both of you. Dude, such a pleasure to be here. Same, and. That was the best Tooth and Tail bet finals match I've ever seen, heard of, casted, or anything. So, such an absolute pleasure to be here with you guys. Yeah, and thanks so much again to Kipo and Tander Draco. I mean, you guys are, are doing a ton of work. Also, Epicasi, the gentleman, uh, keeping the scene alive, uh, casting games. You know, being being on being on the ladder. I mean, it, it's all great stuff, and, and you know, people are still interested, man. I mean, we had really good viewership today. It was a lot of fun. We, the the event had a lot of participants, so uh, make sure you know you, you guys that maybe you check this out. You're like, oh, that that seems cool. I want to get involved with an event. The next event coming up is going to be the gentlemen season nine, 2021 duels, and we've got the intermediate finals tomorrow. Tander Draco and Tatanka get to watch Meek and Exnor. Uh, fighter off meek of course our previous uh champion uh but exor a little bit of the wild card uh kipo do you do you know much about i mean i i know about exor but but tell me a little about his, his tournament journey real quick and, and we'll we'll hop out of here yeah well tatanka and i can talk about it we casted a bunch <laughs> of his games uh i think it was yesterday or two days ago guy loves wolf owl man he does the lizard uh mg variation he was able to win over pip and tosh Right. Um, he was he was able to win over Tandor Draco, to, able to win over a bunch of other really really skilled uh, inner players. So I'm hyped for this final. It's going to be a, very similar to this final. Yeah. Right. A wolf owl player versus a non wolf owl player. Right. So and Meek, I mean this guy is awesome to watch. So that's going to be something to look forward to. Yeah, Meek, Meek is super is... creative player and uh, Exnor has been around. champion. Yeah. Yeah, I'm surprised he's an intermediate this time around. But what, what's funny is I've Exor is this guy to me that I mean I've seen him around forever. I, I cast a bunch of his replays on like the feast and stuff. But you know, really uh, getting the pedal of the metal here in the finals tomorrow. So it's gonna be awesome. All right, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna head out here. So th thanks for having me. I'll see you guys tomorrow. 
yeah, take care, everybody. We're going to wrap it up, let everybody get going. Uh, but thanks again for tuning in, everybody. Don't forget, tomorrow, 4 p.m. CST on Tander Draco's uh, channel, we've got Intermediate Meek vs. Exnor. Big congratulations to Mishi uh, for winning today. Uh, congrats to Tatanka for second place. And thanks, Kipo Tander, for casting. It was a ton of fun, everybody. All right. Good night, all. Yep. Take care. See y'all. Okay, that is it. We are going to get out of here. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll see you tomorrow on Tander Draco's channel. Let's go uh, Let's go give QQ a raid here. He's streaming some tooth and tail. So let's go say hi to him. Keep the party going. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good uh, rest of your night, everybody.